following is a presentation of the Big Blue Sports Network. After a much needed weekend off, tonight with linebacker Micah Jack, backup quarterback Randall Cobb, all out with high ankle. Shake up his receivers for this game, limiting the rotation, hopeful of getting more. Three to nine victory over this Western head football. From Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky. Kentucky Hilltopper. Center only with you. Tonight's game. Bank Corporation. You need the Kentucky office of. With a ton of tradition, tonight they meet on the football field for the first time. Lexington on a perfect night for football. It's the Kentucky Wildcats and the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Hello, everybody. I'm Rob Bromley alongside former UK All-American quarterback Tim Couch. And Tim, it has been two weeks since we were in this stadium. And I think the Cats and their fans will be McAdee made. Yard short of the end zone behind us. You're right. A widely known name in one yard line. He single handedly stopped what would have been a second blue. The same thing to the cast. You know, the bad news is Randall Cobb, Ricky Lumpkin, Micah Johnson, they've all got those high ankle sprains. But Gary Williams is back tonight, and that's good news for the O line. That's great news for the O line. Gary Williams is uh, the most experienced football player. So, offensive line. Or and Tim, the Mike Hartley game you might not have thought him getting SEC on pretty good performance he had a great performance he's three and oh as a starter he hadn't turned the football over no interceptions he was SEC offensive like what Mike is doing and this week uh, Joker Phillips has cut the wide receiving uh, rotation from eight guys down to six guys so any guys that gets on the field playing the wide Exactly what they're doing. I don't look to see any busted routes, any uh, any <laughs> missed hand signals. So I look for those guys to help Mike. KJ Black has been out with a dislocated shoulder. He comes back. He does KJ Black is a the guy they feel really that he's calm under pressure and he's at his best in big time situations. And he's going to be in a hostile environment tonight, but I look for him to be fine. He should handle this situation fine. When he was a freshman, he started his first game ever in the swamp in that game, so I look for him to handle this situation fine tonight. Rich Brooks has made a change at place kicker. Ryan Tidlatchka will get his chance with the field goals. We'll talk about that coming up. And we've got the opening kickoff coming up in just a moment as Kentucky takes on Western Kentucky. And welcome back to Commonwealth. Rapidly. Kentucky meets Western Kentucky for the first time ever. David Elson in his sixth year. Waving the red towel. As we get set to start, the toss was won by the Wildcats. They deferred to the second half. So Tim Maste will kick off. We've got 75 degrees, partly cloudy, humidity 58%, and not much of a wind here tonight out of the north-northwest at 8 miles per hour. So Mastay 
who has put it back into the end zone for touchbacks 12 of 19 times on the season. What a weapon that is. Rich Brooks, after Thursday's practice, announcing a change with his place-kicking situation as Ryan Tidlatchka, the redshirt freshman out of Louisville, will kick the field goals tonight. Lonis Sieber will continue to kick extra points. Morrell Booker and Bobby Rainey are back to return the opening kickoff as Maste puts his foot into it and sends it deep as he has done so frequently this season Tim what a weapon that is what a great weapon I think that's the furthest one he's kicked that one almost went up in the bleachers on that one so he's, he's a little fired up right now tonight's starting lineup sponsored by your local Dodge dealer you can take life as it comes or you can grab life and we look at the Hilltoppers offensive line they have just one senior that is Greg Ryan so it's a relatively young line. Now at running back tonight, they list Morell Booker as the starter, the junior, ahead of Tyrell Hayden, who's out of Lexington Christian Academy right here in town. The quarterback, K.J. Black, sophomore, out of Fern Creek High School in Louisville, had a dislocated shoulder, missed the last couple of games, comes back tonight, first and 10 from the 20. And Jeremy Jarman, Jeremy Jarman, with a sack to start off the game. The junior out of Collierville, Tennessee, gets the Kentucky defense off and rolling. Great job here by Jeremy Jarman. Rich Brooks talked this week in practice. This play, particularly right here, would be a, a big play for Western as they fake the handoff, try to get CJ Black or KJ Black out on the edge, and Jeremy Jarman doing a great job of staying at home and making a big sack. Tyrell Hayden is in the Hilltopper backfield. Actually, he's now here in a slot to the left. Junior out of Lexington as Black works out of the shotgun on second down and long. Incomplete over the middle. Trying to get it to Winkel Graves. Matt Lentz starting at strong safety tonight. Back there on the coverage. And our Dodge starting lineup now for the Wildcat defense. And what a front four it is. A lot of experience with Corey Peters and Myron Pryor at the tackles. Of course, uh, Ricky Lumpkin not available tonight. We've got Braxton Kelly moving over to middle linebacker. Michael Schwindel comes into the weak side linebacker. And starting in place of Ashton Cobb, Matt Lentz tonight, number 10. They understand that Ashton Cobb has had uh, a legal problem over the last 24 hours and is not in uniform tonight. Third down and long, third and 19. And Black. Trying to run to the near sidelines, can't find any room, slips a tackle, and finally goes out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Braxton Kelly, the guy applying the pressure on quarterback K.J. Black. So, the Hilltoppers will have to punt it away. Line of scrimmage to the 17, Tim, it's fourth down and 13. Big stop here from the U.K. defense. They're going to put their offense in a great situation now. You see Braxton Kelly chasing down K.J. Black here, an elusive quarterback, and bumping him out of bounds, forcing the punt. Jeremy Moore has dropped back to punt it away. He's a junior out of Indianapolis. And it's a short kick. Dickey Lyons at the 50-yard line is hit and dropped immediately at the 49. So the Wildcats are going to get it with outstanding field position after their defense puts up an outstanding opening series. And our Dodge starting lineups now for the Wildcat offense. And as we mentioned, when we came on the air, the good news is, is that Gary Williams is back at that offensive tackle spot. Got to get this line together. Of course, George Gonzalez, relatively new. Tony Dixon, the starter at tailback. T.C. Drake, the tight end. E.J. Adams, Dickie Lyons, Jr. John Connors, the fullback. And it's Hartline throwing to Lyons. So right out of the gate, Hartline to Lyons, and it picks up about nine yards. I like the play call a lot here from Joker Phillips. Just trying to get Mike Hartline started. Comes back, throws a simple, quick hitch route to the outside to Dickey Lyons to get Dickey also involved early in this football game. And our Dodge lineup for the Western defense, they play a 3-4. Coach David Elson says it's easier to find four linebackers than it is to find three down linemen. There are the backers and in the secondary for the Hilltoppers tonight. Second down, short yardage. And the Wildcats will pick up the first and 10 on the ground as Tony Dixon carries it down to the 35-yard line, gets about six on the play, and Kentucky records its first first down of the evening. 
just underway at Commonwealth Stadium. Rob Bromley along with Tim Couch. Drew Diener's down on the field. We've played just two minutes. And Kentucky's got it first and ten of the Hilltopper 35-yard line. Dixon trying to find a hole and can't do it. As he is pulled down by Ben Saunders, senior linebacker out of Bowling Green, went to Greenwood High School. Saunders got him low, held him to a two-yard gain. It's second down and eight yards to go. Yeah, this has kind of been the problem for the Wildcats early on this season is the running game. They're really depending on that to be their, their strong point on offense, and it's just not panned out to this point. Alfonso Smith has checked into the Wildcat backfield, and he'll get the call. Smith hit hard as he cracks it down close to the 30-yard line. Alonzo Higgins, inside linebacker, a senior out of Greenwood, South Carolina, made the tackle. He's their top tackler with 30 stops, and we've got a Wildcat down on the field, and it's tight end T.C. Drake. Coming to the field with 12.06 to go, first quarter. No score. Kentucky and Western Kentucky here in Lexington. Good. Whitaker Bank will donate $50 to the UK Library Fund for every field goal attempt in tonight's game. Whitaker Bank, they have your financial goals in mind. Early in the first quarter, as you look at uh, Mike Hartline in the huddle here, T.C. Drake has come off the field with what appeared to be an injury, Tim, to his knee or his lower leg, hard to tell. Yeah, it looked almost like an ankle injury, which has uh, kind of hit this, been the injury bug for this team of, uh, in the recent weeks. Third down five as we get back to the action from the Hilltopper 30-yard line. Hartline out of the shotgun. Uh, he had plenty of time. He got it to Dickey Lyons Jr., but it will not be enough for the first down. Jihad Morris, a cornerback, came in there and ran him out of bounds and looked like to me he was, what, still two or three yards short? Yeah, you know, you think, uh, you know, you want your receiver on a third and short like this to always be beyond the chain. So if you catch it and get tackled, you have first down yardage already. Dickey just a little short right there on his route and got bumped out of bounds before he could turn up the sideline and get a first down. Well, it did not take long, did it? Ryan Tedlatska getting his chance right now with 11-10 left to go in the first quarter off the 35-yard line on the hold of Tim Maste. It'll be a 45-yard attempt for the redshirt freshman from Louisville. And he's made the most of it. Another Wildcat down on the field as Tidlatska kicks a 45-yard field goal to give Kentucky the early lead. It looks like Justin Jeffries is down on the field. The junior offensive tackle out of Louisville, and he appears to be in some pain. Timeout, 10.56 left to go first quarter. Kentucky's taking the early lead on top of Western, 3-0. It's the ultimate in UK football tailgating. The Big Blue Zone is the perfect way to enjoy a festive tailgate party. It's also a great way for businesses to entertain clients or reward employees. The Big Blue Zone is the place to be on game day. For more information, you can contact Big Blue Sports Marketing at 226-4330. There's your score. The Wildcats lead it three to nothing. We have played just over three minutes. And Tim already two Wildcats are injured. Justin Jeffries has just made his way off the field. You see him being attended to down there on the sidelines. We already saw T.C. Drake come off. Yeah, those are big injuries for this offense. You know, you, today was the day you wanted to see this offense come out, perform well, going into SEC play next week, next week, and you have two of your starters go down early in the first drive here. It's a huge blow to this offense. And for the second time tonight, it'll be Tim Maste kicking off. 45 yard field goal by Ryan Tedlotsk has given Kentucky a 3 0 lead. Bobby Rainey, Morrell Booker again back to return the kick as Maste with a wind at his back, and we got whistles all over the field as the ball is kicked. You know, I don't know whether he missed it. Well, the wind blew it off just before he got to the ball. Yeah, because he was going to kick it. The wind is really picking up, coming out of that uh, that end zone, and uh, just blew it off right before uh, Massey was approaching the kick. 
And we said as we came on right at the start of the game an eight mile an hour win. But Tim as you look at these flags above Commonwealth Stadium they are really blowing right now. They are blowing in that direction. It's uh, it's definitely coming in stronger than eight miles an hour right now. And the cats have that wind at their back here in the first quarter. Booker over to the far side of the field Bobby Rainey here to the near side. Another big kick by Tim Maskey. And very wisely, Bobby Rainey, who's done a good job returning kickoffs for the Hilltoppers, had a 92 yard return to the one yard line last week against Murray, decides not to run this one out. And again, David Elson's team will not have good field position with which to work as they will start from their own 20 yard line. Well, the injury, certainly they piled up on the Cats last week against Middle Tennessee two weeks ago. As you see, Justin Jeffries coming off the field. T.C. Drake had already come off. And starts to wear on you after a while. Morrell Booker, nowhere to run. Hit and drop right at the line of scrimmage. Let's check in down on the field with Drew Diener for an injury update. Drew? Well, guys, we're picking up right where we left off last game with the injuries for the Wildcats. D.C. Drake had an ankle injury. Same situation that happened a couple of times last week. Somebody rolled into him, injured the ankle. They're examining Justin Jeffries right now. He has a knee issue. They've got the brace off. They're looking at it, and they're going to evaluate his status right now. Both, I'd say, D.C. Drake at this point questionable, but has been bouncing around here on the sidelines. Nowhere did too early to speculate on what's going to happen with Jeffries. Thank you, Drew. Second down, 10 yards to go here. Still early first quarter. Kentucky with a 3 0 lead. KJ Black takes the snap out of the gun, throwing here, and looked like somebody may have run a wrong route as that ball was tipped by David Jones. Wasn't really thrown anywhere near the intended receiver. Yeah, the receivers there looked like they were confused with the pattern. They end up running into each other and almost cost Western a huge turnover down in their own territory. He almost threw it right to David Jones. Well, the Cats defense, second in the nation in scoring defense and fifth in the nation against the run. Giving up only 19 total points so far this year. And the Hilltoppers, quite frankly, have had problems with their offense. Just like the Wildcats have been trying to get their offense on crank, so has Western Kentucky. K.J. Black will run it. And it gets about five yards, but that's all. Johnny Williams hit him and dropped him from behind the senior out of Jacksonville, Florida. Kentucky defense came out really aggressive right there. Western came out in a five wide receiver set. Kentucky goes straight man to man across the board. Opportunity for big plays all over the field for Western. And they decide to go with the quarterback draw. And Johnny Williams cleans that thing up nicely, giving his offense great field position here. Jeremy Moore is standing back at his own 11 yard line. They will use the junior from Indianapolis to punt here. And he gets a pretty good foot into it. Dicky Lyons dropping back the other side of the 35, slips one tackle, slips another, trying to reverse field, and he can't do it. Line of scrimmage will be the 35 yard line as the Wildcats will begin their second offensive series of the night. Ben Duvall downfield for the Hilltoppers to make the tackle on special teams. If you have a question about today's game, send an email to catquestions at wkyt.com. And Drew, Tim, and I will try to give you an answer during halftime of tonight's telecast. That's catquestions at wkyt.com. Mike Hartline going under center for this series. As he takes a look back. And his running back, who I believe is Tony Dixon. Yes, it is. And Tony squirts through a hole and gets over the 37 to the 38. Got about three yards, but that's all. John Belcher. And Ben Sauters, the outside linebacker. Belcher is the nose tackle. He's a senior out of Somerset, Kentucky. 42 players from the state of Kentucky on this Western roster, and three of them are from right here in Lexington. Call it a gain of three at second down and seven. Oh. 
And it's intercepted. Picked off by Marcus Miner. The tip pass taken in by Miner, and he runs it down to the Wildcat 40-yard line. Marcus Miner, a senior out of Indianapolis. You know, Tim, they had six interceptions in four games. They had four last week against Murray. Right. And they get a big break here on the tip ball. Yeah, ball hawking secondary for the Hilltoppers. Mike Hartline commits the Cardinals in for a quarterback. You never throw the ball high across the middle. His receiver goes up high to catch the ball, tips off his fingertips and bats it up, and it's an easy interception for the Hilltoppers and puts them in great scoring range here for their offense. You see here Mike Hartline kind of pump fakes. He wasn't sure the ball came out of his hand funny. Comes up high. Easy interception for Western. KJ Black out of the shotgun. Hands it off and they keep it on the ground. Bobby Rainey, the ball carrier, brought down by Matt Lentz. There's Rainey, who's done such a good job on their kickoff returns. Also returns punch for them. He got four yards. It's second down six as Western has its first good opportunity of the night following the interception by Marcus Miner. Wildcats with a 3 0 lead thanks to a 45 yard field goal by Ryan Tedlatska. Second and six. Here's Black. And down he goes. Back of the 45 yard line. Corey Peters got to him. Earlier in the game, we saw Jeremy German. Right on the very first series, now it's Corey Peters, the junior out of Louisville Central. I'd say, Rob, this front four the Wildcats have here is as good as anybody in the SEC. They put relentless pressure on the quarterback as K.J. Black sees here. Corey Peters just refuses to be blocked, sheds his man off, throws K.J. Black down in the backfield, and you see him dancing there. He's happy. He's celebrating with his guys. He's possibly pushed Western out of field goal range here. Third down and long now. It's third and 14 as the loss is back to the 44-yard line. And whistles just as K.J. Black takes the snap in the shotgun. And we've got a timeout called by the Hilltoppers here. 6.56 left to go in the first quarter. We'll return to Commonwealth Stadium in a moment with Kentucky leading Western Kentucky 3-0. Be sure to join UK head coach Rich Brooks Monday night at 6 o'clock Eastern for the Rich Brooks radio show. That's the Rich Brooks show Monday night around the state 6 o'clock Eastern on the Big Blue Sports Network. Welcome back to Commonwealth Stadium where Kentucky leads Western Kentucky three to nothing first quarter. Hilltoppers have it third and 13 and they go nowhere. The completion to Quinteron Cooper at the near side but David Jones had it smelled out. Seven on seven, David Jones, number seven, putting the hit on Quinteron Cooper. Yeah, it looked like Western Kentucky expecting Kentucky to blitz right here. Kentucky sits back in his own coverage. They throw the screen. David Jones is waiting on this thing. Comes up with a huge tackle in the backfield, forcing the punt for Western. Lost back to the 48-yard line. So again now, Jeremy Moore will punt for what the third time tonight. With still more than six minutes to go in this first quarter. Dicky Lyon standing at his own 10 yard line comes up on it makes the fair catch going down at the 17 so the Wildcats now will have their worst field position of the evening but they lead in the game three nothing thanks to a 45 yard field goal by Ryan Tedlatska. Mike Hartline has completed two or three and the interception that he threw to Marcus Miner the senior cornerback for the Hilltoppers the first Interception that Mike Hartline has thrown all year. And a very good job of taking care of the football. First and ten for the Wildcats now. As Hartline goes under center. E.J. Adams, the intended receiver at the near side of the field. Minor on the coverage. 
It'll bring up second and ten. You know, Rob, you really want to see Kentucky's offense have some success against this Western Kentucky defense. This is a defense against the two major college teams they face this year in Indiana and Alabama. They've given up an average of 36 points per game and 473 yards. And Kentucky to this point hasn't been able to move the ball very efficiently against them. Second down, now and ten. Hart line out of the shotgun. And the completion to Dickie Lyons just across the 20 yard line. Let's see where they spot his forward progress, maybe as far as the 22. At the 22 yard line, it is. It's still going to be seven yards shy of a first down. Yeah, you see, Kentucky's done a lot of this this season with Mike, uh, just throwing a lot of short underneath passes to Dickey Lines, a little crossing routes. David McBride comes up, makes a nice play right there on Dickey to force a big third down and seven. And Hartline with time now has to run out of the pocket, trying to pick up the first and ten, and he'll get it. As he goes over the 30 yard line and goes down to the 31. Trent Calhoun is the guy applying the pressure on him and a good job by Mike Hartline. Great job for Mike Hartline right there. Coming out of your own end zone pretty much backed up or around your 20 yard line. He he sees nothing down the field as you see Western in great coverage. He tucks that thing knows he only needs seven yards for a big first down conversion slides in there and gets that thing and keeps this drive alive. All the line of scrimmage the 30 first and 10 for the Cats. And for the first time tonight, Derek Locke runs it here to the near sidelines, driven out of bounds by Travis Waters. Tony Dixon started the game. We've seen Alfonso Smith, Derek Locke, his first carry. Yeah, you see the potential that Derek Locke brings to the table. I mean, he, he picked up 10, 12 yards right there so fast. He just, he's instant offense. You get him to football out in space like that, he can keep the chains moving for your team. Just shy of a first down. And I'll tell you, not by much. They did not measure, but that is just inches. Second and very, very short yardage. Maurice Grinner in motion. Locke has got the first and ten. And he goes up to the 43-yard line. Gain of four. And the inside linebackers, Alonzo Higgins and Darvis McBride, come in to make the stop. John Connor checks into the Wildcat backfield. That fullback as Grinner now comes to the sidelines. So they move the chains. Second first down on this drive as we first approach the four minute mark here in the first quarter. Kentucky leading Western Kentucky three to nothing. Line of scrimmage the 43. Lock, hurtling a tackler, lost the football, but he was clearly down to the 50 yard line. John Belcher, the nose tackle, the senior out of Somerset made the tackle. Derek Locke really igniting this UK rushing offense here. You know, Tony Dixon is a starter, but all the other running backs average more yards per carry than Tony Dixon. But Joker Phillips feels really comfortable with Tony Dixon and his knowledge of picking up the blitzes and, and catching the football out of the backfield. That's why he's he's a starter. These guys are coming in in relief for it. Good gain on first down. It's second and three. Lions out of the left. They send Matt Roark, the freshman, here to the near side. Hart line. In and out of the hands of T.C. Drake to his return to action. Well, it's good news that he's back on the field. It's not good news that he couldn't hang on to that pass. Yeah, it's good to see T.C. back out on the field. But, you know, Mike puts this thing kind of on his back hip and is forcing him to turn around and try to catch that ball. And he's already has a bad ankle. So, you know, that's going to, you know, kind of limit him on his movement. As you see the ball kind of on T.C.'s back hip, he puts that bad ankle on the ground, and is not able to uh, spin around and make that catch. And it brings up a big third down, third and three from right at midfield. Cats have got to get it down to the Hilltopper 47 here to pick up the first and ten. Hard line will try and throw for it. And out of the backfield, there's Rock. He's got the first down. Down to the Hilltopper 40-yard line, first and ten, Kentucky. You see
see Mike Hartline here. He knows exactly. He goes, you see him going through his progressions. He knows it's a zone coverage from the Hilltoppers. He goes one, two, finds his third outlet man. Derek Locke out on the backfield, picks up a big first down, keeps these chains moving, and puts Kentucky into a scoring position on offense. The Wildcats now with 41 on the ground and 26 through the air. Rashad Etheridge, who's come into the topper defensive backfield, made that last tackle. Derek Locke again gets very short yardage here, if anything at all. Darvis McBride, the inside linebacker, a junior out of Fort Myers, Florida, coming up to make the tackle for David Elson's team. David Elson, native of Indianapolis. And I've got something in common with him. He went to Butler University, was a safety at Butler back in the early 90s. Done a good job at Western, 39 and 24. He was there quite a bit after I was. <laughs> He's a young guy. He's a young, energetic coach. He's doing a great job there for the Hilltoppers. Second out and 10. And unable to hang on to the pass here is Eric Etiemi, the freshman out of Miami at the near side of the field. Marcus Miner on the coverage. Well, that's not going to make Rich Brooks any happier on the sidelines. No, it's definitely not. And, you know, Rob, we talked in the opener about how Mike Hartline has to start getting some help from these guys, and that's certainly not going to help your young quarterback. He throws a beautiful comeback route to the sideline, hits his receiver right in the chest with it, and he's unable to make the play for Mike Hartline. Kentucky 2 of 3 on third down conversions. Tyrus Langster is now checked in for the Wildcats. He split out to the left side. Dickey Lyons to the near side of the field and to the air is Hartline down the middle of the field and tipped and nearly intercepted incomplete. They were trying to go right back to Eddie Emmy and I think it was McBride who got his hand on it and tipped the pass. Yeah, Mike, Mike's going to be upset with himself when he sees the film tomorrow. They had a combination route where T.C. Drake hooks up and the other receiver comes over the top with an in route. Both the defenders went with the in route. No one covered T.C. Drake wide open for a first down catch right there. Mike just didn't see him. So I'm sure Randy Sanders will tell him on the sideline as he is right now that he had a guy wide open. So they'll come back to that play later in the game. Well, here's Ted Lotchka now, the Wildcats pooch punter. Bobby Rainey is standing back at his own 10 yard line. Good snap. Ted Lotchka trying to pin the toppers back around their own goal. And it hits inside the 10 and is going to be down just inside the 10 yard line. So once again, Western Kentucky will not have good field position with which to work. As we approach now the latter stages of this first quarter of play, 150 on the clock and Kentucky leading three to nothing. Be sure to join me for Behind the Blue every month. I host the magazine show that features all of the University of Kentucky's Olympic sports from swimming to cross country, from volleyball to the rifle team. That's Behind the Blue. Check your local listings for the time in your area. Western takes over on offense. First and 10 from its own 10. KJ Black keeps it. Hit and drop for a loss back at the six. Looked like Shamari Moore was in there quickly, the senior out of Camden, New Jersey. And this Western offense, Tim, just continues to struggle. Well, they're trying to run the football here against the Kentucky defense. That's excellent against the run. Shamari Moore is staying at home, makes a great play on KJ Black. Justin Jeffries right now leaving the field, and unfortunately, uh, hate to say that that's not a good sign, but he goes to the locker room. We did see TC Drake return to the field for the Wildcats. Second on and 13 after a loss of three. Black. Keeping it, taking the handoff again, getting it out of the nine yard line where Ventrell Jenkins, the defensive end, the senior out of Columbia, South Carolina, brought him down along with Braxton Kelly. Yeah, that, that read play out of the shotgun they do, where they're going to uh, put the football into the running back's belly, ride it up in there, and, and make that defensive end make a decision. Ventrell Jenkins doing a great job of staying at home, playing his assignment right there, and making a big stop. Third down, 10 yards to go. Hilltoppers back at their own 10. They're 0 for 3 on third down. Black just going to run it. Nothing there. 
Johnny Williams was in there, so was Corey Peters. Corey Peters, the junior out of Louisville Central, made some big plays for the Wildcat defense here tonight. And with that play, we have reached the end of the first quarter. We'll break away. Played one period here at Commonwealth Stadium. And the Wildcats have the best of it, leading Western Kentucky three to nothing. Stadium in Lexington, we're heading into the second quarter of play with Kentucky leading Western Kentucky three to nothing. And a punting situation for the Hilltoppers as they face fourth and 11 back at their own nine. And Jeremy Moore is standing back in his own end zone. Dickie Lyons is right at the 50 yard line. The Wildcats have dominated field position in this game. Moore trying to kick it to the sidelines and get a roll here and he doesn't get much of a kick. It goes out of bounds at the 38 yard line. Now the Cats will get their best field position of the night. Let's go down to the field to Drew Diener. Well, down here with a very special ex Wildcat. You still get you hear them chant you down here. Very much so. Unbelievable. You know, it was only a week ago. Uh, you know, the best experience of my life. You know, to be able to play in a Ryder Cup is definitely cool. To be able to do it in the home state, you know, dream come true. To have all the, you know, the Kentucky fans behind me and, you know, be able to come here and have them cheer me on like they just did. It was, you know, it's still a dream come true. All right, we return to the action. Thank you, Drew. John Connor coming out of the backfield, hauling in the pass. He's driven out of bounds over at the far sideline by Marcus Miner. Fullback John Connor on first down on the catch. First play of this series that began at the Western 38. The gain is down to the 29 yard line. Pickup of nine, second down and one. Great to see J.B. Holmes here in Commonwealth Stadium. What an exciting three days that was at Valhalla in Louisville last week. Up the middle. Keep it on the ground, trying to pick up the first and ten. And I think it should be enough for Tony Dixon. The senior running back out of Parrish, Alabama, getting up off the pile. Alonzo Higgins hit him, so did Dan Klein. Western's defensive end, a senior out of Centerville, Ohio. Wildcats have it first and 10 now at the 28 yard line of Western. In a 3 0 game here, right at the start of the second quarter. Rob Bromley along with Tim Couch here at Commonwealth Stadium. Drew Diener's down on the field. What a hole that was! Finding his way, Tony Dixon. All the way down close to the 15 yard line before he's hit and dropped by Darvis McBride. This is what the UK offense was expecting out of their running game coming into the season. Holes just like that for these quick, elusive, fast running backs to get up in. Tony Dixon hits that thing as fast as he can, makes a couple guys miss, gets a huge gain down here in Kentucky territory. Another first down for the Cats, now down to the 16. As the Cats bidding now to put up the first touchdown of the night. Hard line. Throwing over the middle. T.C. Drake is all the way down to the three, and it'll be first and goal right there. Travis Waters, the free safety for Western, made the tackle, but it's first and goal for Kentucky. That's where you want to put the football when you're, when you're throwing across the middle. Earlier in the game, Mike Hartline throws the ball high across the middle. It's tipped for an interception. Here he sticks that thing on T.C. Drake's uh, right in his chest. He has no option but to catch that football. That's how you step up and deliver a ball across the middle. Hartline going under center now with Tony Dixon and John Connor behind him. Dixon. And Western had that defense pretty well. Going to be a loss of about a yard. Darvis McBride, Marcus Miner coming up to make the hit. It'll be second down and goal from that point. McBride out of Fort Myers, Florida, junior. As the Western defense here now trying to stiffen. Kentucky already out in front, 3 0, trying to add to it here early in the second quarter of play. Dixon to the one. And it'll bring up third and goal. Dan Klein, the defensive end, comes in to make the tackle for the toppers. So 
and see if the Wildcats can get it over here, or if they don't, would they try to get the touchdown on fourth down? I would think as well as their defense is playing tonight that they would go ahead and go for this on fourth down, knowing if they don't get it, Western has a 99-yard field to go, and Kentucky feels comfortable with their defense in that situation. Got everybody in tight. Dixon, touchdown. Tony Dixon goes over from a yard out. So Tony Dixon has the first Wildcat touchdown. He needed only 13 yards here tonight to tie Dickie Lyons Sr. at number 27 on the all-time UK rushing list. I think it's safe to say he's got that. Absolutely. He's, he's done a great job here tonight. He's looked explosive running the football. You feel good for him being able to get a chance to stick that thing in the end zone and make this a, a 10 to nothing game. Lona Sieber is still kicking the extra points, and he puts that one right down the middle. 11-43 left to go in the first half, and Kentucky extends its lead. Here at Commonwealth Stadium, it's Kentucky 10, Western Kentucky nothing. Do you have a question about tonight's game? Well, send an email to catquestions at WDKYT.com, and Drew, Tim, and I will try to give you an answer during halftime. That's catquestions at WDKYT.com. We had some trouble with the microphone earlier with J.B. Holmes. Let's go back down to Drew Diener. All right, we've got him corralled again. What's it like for you? I mean, you're like a celebrity. You're the biggest star in the state right now. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, UK fans have always been just unbelievable to any of their sports figures, and it's just a uh, dream come true to be able to have a chance to play on the Ryder Cup team, to play for the U.S., and to be in the home state, dream come true. And, you know, these fans have just been behind me so much. It's, you know, I just can't thank them enough for being there. And, it's just an unbelievable experience and just, uh, you know, best week of my life. You got the number 17 jersey on. I assume that's for the great hole we'll always be talking about. Yeah, I guess so. You know, we finished it off on 17. We didn't need to go to 18. So, but um, unbelievable experience, uh, you know, experience of my lifetime. I, I'm proud to, you know, gone to university, proud to be from Kentucky. You know, it's wonderful to be able to do that in this state and just, you know, so excited to have that opportunity. You seem like you enjoyed the introduction tonight to the crowd about as much as you enjoyed the shot on 17 last week. What did that mean to you? Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Like I said, the fans have just been unbelievable. They were unbelievable with the Ryder Cup. They've been unbelievable my whole career here. You know, UK fans are just die hard and can't beat them. So, um, you know, just to, you know, get that uh, you know, that big of applause for uh, for that is just unbelievable. And, just glad they're behind me. Well, I think I speak for everybody in the state when I say thank you for what you've done. Congratulations, JB. Thank you. Thanks. All right, that's JB Holmes down here on the sideline, guys. Back up to you. Thank you, Drew. Bobby Rainey returned the kickoff to the 23, and now the Hilltoppers just keep it on the ground here and run it to the far side of the field. Andrew McLeod. And they've brought in a junior running back out of Harrodsburg, Kentucky, number 34 as they try to get this offense going. And the gain was up to the 31 yard line, a gain of eight, it's second down and two yards to go. KJ Black, been in there all the way at quarterback. Now they give it to Morrell Booker, the junior out of Louisville. He's brought down by Corey Peters and Jeremy Jarman. Trying to pick up the first and 10. And it's close, but I'd say he's short. Yeah, from where they've marked it now, he's about a yard shot. Bobby Rainey checks in now for the Hilltopper offense. Well, they put Rainey back there at quarterback. He keeps the ball. Over the 30, he's got a first down down the sidelines. Bobby Rainey run out of bounds in Kentucky territory at the 46. Matt Lentz and Marcus McClinton finally got him. Well, they're using uh, Bobby Rainey for everything here tonight, Tim. They are. Bobby Rainey makes a heck of a player. He's actually hitting the backfield. You know, you never like on a third and one. I don't like when a quarterback is in the shotgun in that situation, but it ends up working out for Western here because Bobby Rainey breaks the tackle and gets down the sideline. 22 yards on the gain. I believe that's their longest offensive play of the night. They've got a first and 10 in Wildcat territory. And that was Booker again. Your 
Remy Jarman coming in to bring him down. I beg your pardon, Myron Pryor there along with Jarman on Booker. Booker had come in on the season, had run for almost 100 yards and two touchdowns. But the Hilltopper ground game, not very productive. And David Elson here in the second quarter doing everything he can to get it going. Right now they've got it at the Wildcat 45, second and nine. Booker trying to slip a tackle, finds the going rough. I think he gets a couple of yards, not much more than that. Matt Lentz got the start at strong safety tonight. The redshirt freshman out of Simpsonville, South Carolina, on the tackle. Myron Pryor also in there. Well, this Kentucky defense only giving up about 50 yards rushing a game, Rob, and they're showing why that they're, they're, they're high, that highly ranked in, in, the, in the nation right now. Third down now, big third down play, third and seven. Black couldn't find anybody open. Braxton Kelly put him on the turf. The senior out of LaGrange, Georgia. Well, I know KJ Black is just coming off a separated shoulder the last couple of weeks. If he wants to make it through this game, when he gets out of the corner, he needs to go ahead and throw that football away if nothing's there because this Kentucky defense is pursuing full steam ahead right now. Loss of about five. It's marked just across the Wildcat 48. They're going to have to punt it away. Jeremy Moore in to do the kicking, and Vicky Lyons is standing back at his own 10 yard line. And again, he tries to kick it to the sidelines here. This time he gets a good roll, and they're going to have to down the ball before it gets to the goal line, and they just got it right down by the pylon. Cats will be backed up against their own goal line. 8.09 left to go, second quarter. Kentucky leading Western Kentucky 10-0. The best coverage of the Cats online is at the official site of University of Kentucky Sports, UKAthletics.com. Rosters, photo galleries, schedule scores, live audio of every Big Blue Sports Network broadcast. You can get it all on UKAthletics.com. It's not official until UKAthletics.com says it is. Gary Williams back on that Wildcat offensive line tonight as they begin this series. The Cats have got their worst field position of the evening. They're Backed up against their own goal line. Trent Calhoun was the fellow who downed it just before it got to the goal line. And throwing out of his own end zone, Hartline gets it to Dickie Lyons Jr. Knocked out of bounds short of the 10 as he was knocked out over there by Rashad Etheridge. Joker Phillips showing a lot of confidence in Mike Hartline, letting him throw the ball out of his own end zones right there. He makes a nice throw to Dickie Lyons, who spins around, gets about eight yards out of that thing. Second down and short now, second and two. Cats get a little bit of breathing room here. Derek Locke, who's done a good job running the ball here tonight, gets the call, but he's hauled down short of the 10. And it's going to be third down coming up. Let's go down on the field to Drew Diener, who's with Jacob Tammy. Drew. And that's right. It's not his stars down here on the sidelines. Jacob Tammy on a bye week with the Colts. What's it like catching Peyton Manning now in a pro? Well, he's uh, he's a we're back in. Uh, he's the type of guy that you want uh, a lot of fun. Second after this play, Rob will catch back up with Jacob. Well, they try and pick up the first down. It was third down, a yard to go. And it should be enough for it. Robert Dark on the tackle. Let's go back down to Drew. Your brother, your brother now. You got a family uh, rivalry going on this game. Your brother plays for Western. Well, it's tough. It's tough. I'm, I'm rooting for him to get in there and make some plays, uh, but it's hard to root against the cat. So, got to wear the blue. What do you enjoy about coming back here? Well, everything. It's home, and uh, it's it's uh, it's awesome. As we're watching these young receivers for Kentucky. There's been a lot of talk about, you know, inexperience and developing. What's the biggest challenge you think for these guys? Well, you know, uh, a lot of young guys. That's just it. Inexperience. The biggest challenge is getting experience, and they're doing that right now. And uh, and I think they'll come into their own as they get more of that. Well, best of luck in this season in the NFL. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. That's Jacob Tammy back up to you guys. 
Thank you, Drew. The Wildcats picking up another first down on the pass to Derek Locke. They've now got it out of the 25-yard line. First and ten. Just over six and a half minutes left to go here in this first half with Kentucky leading Western Kentucky 10 to nothing. Hartline right back to the air. Incomplete down the far sidelines, and he just threw that one away. Dickie Lyons was out there. Marcus Minor on the coverage. It'll bring up second and ten. Yeah, bring up second and ten here. You know, you got to already consider this drive a success for the Wildcats, considering where they started from inside their own one yard line. All you're really trying to do there is get one first down and give your punter room to get that thing out of there, kind of flip the field position. So this this drive is going really well for the Wildcats. Hope they can keep it going and get get a, get a few more first downs. Lions out of the right. They've got E.J. Adams here to the near side of the field. Hart line. And out of the backfield, that's Connor again. Run out of bounds at about the 30 by Torian Smith, an inside linebacker, a junior out of Perry, Georgia. And for the Cats, it'll bring up third down and about five yards to go. Ten to nothing, Kentucky. Matt Roark. Checks into the Wildcats offensive huddle. They send Adams and Lions here to the near side. Roark goes out of the far side of the field. And Hartline taking his time. The play clock got all the way down to one second. Throwing here and out of the backfield. It's Derek Rock over the 40. And he makes his way to the 47 yard line before he's pushed out of bounds by Ryan Beard, the strong safety. And apparently we got a penalty marker drop back at the 27 yard line, drop behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Mike Hartland does a good job of stepping up in the pocket here, finding his outlet receiver once again, and Derek Locke, unfortunately for the Wildcats, this looks like it's coming back. Initial indication against the Cats are referee Penn Wagers. Illegal shift. Number 12 on the offense went in motion prior to the offensive line getting set. Five yard penalty. Down remains third. Called on Dickie Lyons Jr. And it nullifies a big play as it marches it back to him to the 25 yard line of the Cats. It does. And you know, I don't think Rich Brooks agrees with that call. He's on the sideline here giving one of the officials an earful. So I don't think he really agreed with Dickie Lyons being in movement prior to the line being set there. That our first penalty of the game. All right, third and ten from the 25. As receivers are out to both sides, hard line. Gonna have to run with it. Down he goes. Over the 30-yard line at about the 33. Travis Waters, the free safety. Is the first man to get to him in Kentucky. We'll have to punt it away. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, Rob, you know, with Kentucky being able to get a couple first downs on that drive, being backed up in their own end zone, now they flip the field position. Instead of Western getting the ball around midfield, now hopefully with a good punt from Kentucky here, they get the ball around the 20, 30 yard line. It's a big, big difference for the defense. Bobby Rainey dropping back around his own 25, and here's Tim Maste now, who will be punting into the wind. Puts a strong foot into it. And Rainey has to call for a fair catch just inside his own 20. Timeout with 427 left to go in this second quarter. And Kentucky leads Western Kentucky 10-0. At the conclusion of tonight's game, we will be selecting the Bridgestone Firestone SNS Tire Wildcat Player of the Game. That's the Wildcat Player of the Game, brought to you by Bridgestone Firestone and SNS Tire. Rob Bromley along with Tim Couch here at Commonwealth Stadium. Drew Diener's down on the field. First and ten for the Hilltoppers here. And it is Rainey. And he finds Rennie Ramon with a 30 down the sidelines. Bobby Rainey is in the Kentucky territory. And they finally ran him out of the 40 yard line. Marcus McClinton got him out of bounds. And I'll tell you tonight, this freshman out of Griffin, Georgia, Bobby Rainey, who's done such a great job of returning kicks, 
just explodes. He, he's an explosive running back. He's been all of Western's offense. They've only had a couple positive plays in this game, and he has both of them. They need to continue to get this guy the football. All the way to the Wildcat 40. And now we see Tyrell Hayden, the junior out of Lexington, Lexington Christian Academy, carried for the first time, brought down by Jeremy Jarman. Here comes Rainey right back in as Hayden goes to the sidelines. Terrell Hayden had been off to a slow start this year at 42 carries for 131 yards and one touchdown coming in here tonight after running for over 1,100 yards last season. And now they've put to Rainey in that offensive backfield. He's come through with some big runs. Second down and long. The pass incomplete here at the near side. Intended for Winquell Graves. Shamari Moore back there on the coverage. And it will bring up third down and about nine yards to go. Kentucky secondary doing a great job here tonight. Western only has, my, they have minus four yards passing here late in the second quarter. So, you know, their only really effective plays they've had is, is running the football on the two long runs down the sideline. Rainey's carried it three times for 67 yards. Third down, nine from the 39 of the Wildcats. 3.31 on the clock here in the second quarter. Black. Overthrown. Incomplete. Nowhere near the intended receiver. Tristan Jones, the tight end, the redshirt freshman out of Mount Sterling, Kentucky, went to Clark County High School. He's coached there by Paul Columbia. And Black simply overthrows it. Yeah, it looks like he had something here. I think the biggest thing is helping Kentucky secondary tonight is their front four is getting so much pressure pressure on KJ Black, making him throw the football before he actually wants to. Corey Peters was the guy who had the pressure on on that play. Here's Jeremy Moore now to punt it away again, and Dickie Lyons is standing at his own 10. Still a lot of time left in this second quarter. Penalty marker goes down, and the kick. Goes into the end zone. We got a penalty marker drop back at the line of scrimmage. So hang on, let's wait and see what this is. Offside on the defensive end, Kentucky, penalty five yards, fourth down. I'm not sure who was lined up at defensive end and Penn Wagers did not give us a number. That's still not not be enough for a first down. Let's see if it changes Western's thinking here. The line of scrimmage is now the 33 yard line. Looks like Western's coming back out with the offense here. Yep. I think they feel pretty confident their defense has actually held Kentucky to 10 points tonight even with Kentucky having great field position. So they feel comfortable with their defense right now. We're going to go for it. And again now they've got Rainey in there at uh, quarterback and they put KJ Black split way out to the right and here goes Rainey again. He runs out of room at the far side of the field and penalty markers. No they called timeout. No marker down timeout was called. As you see Kentucky so it was in a little Prior bit of confusion. The there. Snapped, timeout Kentucky first timeout of the half. Kentucky a little confused there when Western came to the, came back out on the field with their offensive team. So Kentucky was scrambling trying to get lined up with these guys. Shamari Moore does a heads up thing and calling a timeout. Make sure everyone is on the same page here. Well as we look at the Wildcat huddle be sure to catch the Rich Brooks show the weekly TV show on the Big Blue Sports Network. Check your local listings for affiliate information and the time in your area. The Rich Brooks television show. It is 10 to nothing Wildcats. Kentucky started the scoring back in the first quarter on a 45 yard field goal by Brian Titchlatka, who made good on his first uh, attempt since he was named as the field goal kicker after practice Thursday. And then a one yard run by Tony Dixon made it 10 to nothing Kentucky. So now again, fourth down, following the timeout, fourth down and about four. And they're going to attempt a field goal. As 
out of a hold of more. They put in Tanner Seward, a senior out of Robards, Kentucky. He's made four or five on the season, 48 yards as long. This is a 50 yard attempt. And he got it. Tanner Seward, a senior out of Robards, Kentucky. He kicked a 48 yarder. This one is good from 50 yards, and it gets Western on the board with 307 left to go here in the second quarter. Well, Western had a little trouble deciding what they want to do. Right? They try to punt one time. That doesn't that work. They get a penalty. They come back on, try to get the offense out there. That doesn't work out. Kentucky comes a timeout. They come back out and attempt a 50 yard field goal here by Trent. I mean, I'm sorry by Tanner Stewart and he, he drills the thing from, from 50 yards out. So you know you see how happy he is. He knows that's a big score brings his team to within seven now. Well the Hilltoppers get their first points of the night and Tim he put a good foot into that one. He did and going in that direction he has the wind at his back right there so that that helped a lot but he sure he sure got a good leg into it uh, besides that. So now in a 10 three game still with a lot of time left before halftime. As Seward tees it up at the 30 yard line and will kick off from left to right. Sellout crowd here at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington. The Wildcats with their third consecutive home game and trying to make it 4 0 on the season. Kentucky has won 12 straight non conference games. That is the fourth longest streak in the country. Trying to make it 13 in a row here tonight with a win over the Toppers. Seward with a wind at his back. Derek Locke's going to bring it out for him a couple of yards deep. He's got it over the 20, over the 30. Derek Locke down the sidelines. There goes Derek Locke. They won't catch him. He takes it back all the way for the touchdown. Derek Locke with a 100 yard kickoff return. It was a couple of yards deep. And he brought it back all the way. He went through a seam there, Tim, and turned on the Jets, and he was just gone. It doesn't take much. See, he gets a little crease right here. Derek Locke, that's all he needs. This guy is a track star. He's, he's a track star in shoulder pads. All he needs is that little seam. He gets down the sideline, and there is no one on this football field that can catch Derek Locke in the open field. Well, right after Western got the lift of the field goal, the 50-yard field goal by Seward, it's Locke with a kickoff return. Lunas Sieber with the extra point. And the Wildcats go back in front now by 14 points. They have their biggest lead of the night. The last time a Wildcat returned a kickoff for a touchdown, Keenan Burton against Louisville. September 3rd, 2006, 100 yards. And this will go down as a 100 yarder, even though it was a couple of yards deep in the end zone. Yeah, it looked like, uh, you know, they got a good good kick there with the wind of their back. Derek Locke takes it a couple yards deep in the end zone, decides to bring this thing out. And I'm sure Rich Brooks is pretty pleased with his decision to go ahead and return that thing. But Tim, when you put this kid in the game, things happen. You know, they sure happened last season. Just to remember the Arkansas game, the LSU game. The Vanderbilt game when he when he turned in uh, those good rushing performances right he does it again here tonight he, he's Mr. Instant offense I'll tell you when they put him in the game tonight he had a couple you know big gains on the ground they threw him a couple passes out of the backfield on some flare patterns got some good yardage there and now he ignites this crowd with a hundred yard kickoff return to make it 17 to 3. And now Mass Day will kick off and kick into this wind, which uh, seems to have picked up here in the evening. It was mostly a cloudy, overcast day in Lexington. The clock skies cleared off uh, early in the afternoon. It's really a beautiful afternoon and early evening, just perfect for tailgating. We've had good luck with the weather all season. Now there's Rainey again, this time from the two. Lost his footing. Went down just across the 17 yard line. So the Hilltopper offense comes right back on the field. Now down 17 to 3 and 247 on the clock. A 
offensive coordinator of the Hilltoppers is uh, Kevin Wright. He was a longtime Indiana high school coach. Coached at Warren Central up in Indianapolis, one of the big high schools up there. Also coached Trinity for a year. On his second season at Western. And they keep it on the ground, and here goes Rainey through a hole. Breaks a tackle. Rainey all the way to the 40 yard line. 23 yards on the run by Bobby Rainey, who continues to rip off the yardage. Robbie McAtee brought him down. Bobby Rainey has been really impressive here tonight. Western just has to find different ways to get this kid the football. Every time he gets it, explosive things happen for this team. He's got four carries for 90 yards now. And here on first and ten, down goes Rainey. Nowhere to run. It was Braxton Kelly and Ventrell Jenkins converging on him. Kelly, the linebacker, Ventrell Jenkins, the defensive end, Braxton. Moving over to middle linebacker spot with uh, Micah Johnson on the sideline. Sam Maxwell's in there right now at linebacker. Loss was back to the 35 yard line. Loss of five, second and 15. They gave it to Rainey again, and he does well to get back to the line of scrimmage. I think Bobby Rainey's uh, caught Kentucky's attention defensively. The last two times he's touched the ball, they've got him in the backfield. So they're, they're really keying in on him now. So they, Western has to get a little more creative and start throwing this guy some swing patterns, some screen passes, stuff like that, to get him out in a little more open space. Third down and long as we approach the one minute mark here in the second quarter. A tackle down he goes at the line of scrimmage. Johnny Williams converging on him. He was under pressure, couldn't get away. Sam Maxwell also in there. Timeout. Kentucky. See KJ Black here. He, he gets out of pressure right here, seconds. and you see Johnny timeout. Williams just to come and clean him up. Braxton Kelly's in on the tackle as well. Kentucky gets a quick timeout. They have a minute left. Uh, one time out here. They're trying to get a quick score here before they go in, into the locker room at halftime. Good job by Braxton Kelly. I think I said Maxwell. And a big smile from Braxton Kelly as he comes off the field. And only a minute seven left on the clock as Western now faces a fourth down. So for the Wildcats, it's been a pretty good half of football as Derek Locke. Has come in and run for 21 yards on five carries. Tony Dixon, 26 yards. Like to see more production out of that running game. And an electrifying 100 yard kickoff return by Derek Locke has given Kentucky its biggest lead of the night here at 17 to 3. Wildcats right now have. 93 yards rushing. Beg your pardon, 69 yards rushing. Western has 93. Only 15 yards, only 143 yards. Fair catch called by Dickey Lyons on the punt. That's picked up by one of the short men. And here goes DeMario Ford all the way back to the 35 yard line of Western Kentucky. Brought down by Preston King. What a, what a gutsy play by DeMario Ford. You know, you're taught his return, man. Do not touch that football. Just let it die. But he goes ahead and thinks he can make a play, and he makes something out of that. Oh, wait a minute. What are they going to call here? The Kentucky receiver gave a fair catch signal. When he picked the ball up, by rule, it becomes dead. Had his body picked it up. First down. Ben Wagers with the explanation, but Dickie Lyons did single fair catch. He did pick it up so the Wildcats get it at their own 42 with just under a minute on the clock. 
And still some time here to add to a 17 to 3 lead if Rich Brooks decides to go after it. Hard line out of the shotgun. Lions at the 45-yard line. That's a gain of about three. Jihad Morris on the coverage for Western Kentucky. And the clock running now with 41 seconds left. Hard line right back out of the shotgun. And they're trying to get it to Tony Dixon coming out of the backfield. Incomplete. It stops the clock with 26 seconds left in this first half. L.J. Harbison on the coverage for the Hilltoppers. Line of scrimmage is the 45. The Cats still have 26 seconds. Yeah, 26 seconds here with one timeout. Kentucky still has plenty of time if they can convert this third down here to go down and get some points out of this drive. Trying to get it to Maurice Gritter, the tight end, incomplete, and he had him out there. Travis Waters on the coverage. And Hartline couldn't quite hook up with him. Yeah, it looked like a little bumping there between uh, Travis Walters and Maurice Grinner at the top of the route. Possibly a pass interference, maybe bump Maurice Grinner off of that route a little bit as you see the contact, but no call here. But I like the aggressiveness by Mike Hartline throwing that ball down the middle. He's seen no safety in center field there, so he had a shot to take down the middle of the field. Last day into the game to do the punting. And we'll see what Bobby Rainey can come up with here. A low kick. And Rainey takes it in right at the 18, slipped the tackle, and then he carries a tackler all the way to the 22. Clock stops with 12 seconds left in the half. Rainey looks like a strong kid, doesn't he? He does. He's, he's a great looking athlete. I'd say he's, he's, he's pretty elusive out there. These Wildcats having a tough time trying to get a handle on him tonight. Leave it to Alfonso Smith to get downfield quickly on special teams. Line of scrimmage is the 23 yard line as Western takes over now with only 12 seconds left to go in this first half. It'll be very interesting here to see what Western does as they come out offensively. I don't think they'd get too aggressive, especially down here in Kentucky territory, down 17 to 3 with only 12 seconds. I'd play it pretty safe right here if I were Western. Hilltoppers have 93 yards on the ground, and they keep it on the ground. So Rainey carries it to the 34 yard line as the clock now goes down to five seconds. That'll put the Hilltoppers over 100 yards rushing here in the first half. Kentucky has just 69. And the clock will run out. That's the end of the first half. So we played two quarters of football here at Commonwealth Stadium in the first meeting ever between Kentucky and Western Kentucky. And the Wildcats lead it 17 to 3. We'll be back in a moment with our halftime activities. The ESPN360.com College Football Halftime Report is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Visit coachoftheyear.com and cast your vote for the most responsible coach in 2008. Hi, everybody. I'm Paul Severino. We welcome you into the ESPN360.com Halftime Report presented by Liberty Mutual. We'll get you back out to your game shortly, but we begin... With the biggest upset of the season, mainly because of how untouchable everyone thought USC was in a down year for the Pac-10. But on the contrary, Oregon State wins 27-21. It was 21-0 Beavers at the half, but the Trojans close it to a seven-point game after three. But that's as close as they would get, thanks to the legs of Jacquez Rogers and his 180 yards on the ground and two touchdowns, Corvallis turned into a madhouse. Here's our Pac-10 blogger Ted Miller with more. Thanks a lot, Paul. Last year, USC lost to a 41-point underdog in Stanford. This year, they lost to a 25-point underdog in Oregon State. But these defeats were very different. Last year, USC dominated Stanford statistically. They just had four terrible interceptions from John David Booty, who was playing with a broken finger and probably shouldn't have been playing. 
against Oregon State, USC just flat got whooped up front. A true freshman rushed for 186 yards. The Trojans, with all their glittering running backs, rushed for 86 yards. The Trojans convert just two of 10 on third down play. You know why the Trojans lost? Is they got whooped. That's the difference in this game and last year against Stanford. Still to come, more on USC's loss to Oregon State. And we're a month into the season, so it's time to hand out report cards to those coaches that found a new home in the offseason. The ESPN360.com halftime report rolls on. Welcome back. Here's this week's top 25. It looks similar from last week. USC, Oklahoma, Georgia, Florida State, one through four. Safe to say the Trojans won't be in the top spot next week. Last week, five of the top ten teams were from the SEC. Only four this week, but three of them reside in the top five. The Big 12 also has four top ten teams. Oklahoma, you saw, Missouri, Texas, Texas Tech. BYU jumped up three spots to number 11 following yet another shutout. Ohio State falls to 14. Boise State comes in at number 19. The first time this season, the Broncos have creeped into the poll. And Vanderbilt cracks the list for the first time in 24 years. The Commodores are number 21. Let's talk coaches now, old faces, new places. How's it working out? Here's the college football live crew. Reese Davis and Trevor Maddich, you know, just about a month, Trevor, into the season. I, I think it's a little early for report cards on new coaches, but we can give progress reports. So uh, let's let's talk about some of the new coaches in college football. Start with Mike Sherman at Texas A&M. A little bit of a bumpy start for the Yankees. Yeah, they lose at home to Arkansas State to open the season. But, Reese, I think the way you phrase that is very important because it's a progress report. And right now, what we see at Texas A&M is not progress towards a lot of wins. What we see is how is Mike Sherman changing the culture at Texas A&M. And it's very clear that one of the first things that Mike Sherman wanted to focus on was accountability of everybody in the program. After they lost at home to Arkansas State, Sherman went public and took the blame for certain things that happened in that game that weren't his fault. And I think what he was trying to do, Reese, was set an example for his players, to say that we will stand up and we will be men and we will not worry about that. That's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. And until that accountability is ingrained, I don't think Sherman's going to get where he wants to go. So I give him a, a good progress report for identifying that. You know, everybody said it in the offseason. Oh, Michigan's going to struggle. New system, not the right quarterback. But I don't know that anybody really actually believed it until they saw it. How about Rich Rodriguez's his first few games at Michigan? You know, I, I like what Rich Rodriguez is doing there. Again, it's very difficult because Stephen Three and Nick Sheridan are not quarterbacks that can really run this offense very well. This is a, an institution in terms of offensive line and receivers and running backs that are having to learn not only a new language, but a new way of playing the game of football in terms of technique. And so again, you look at progress. And I look at the opener against Utah. Michigan lost that game in the big house. But what Rodriguez did in that game impressed me. When it was clear that Michigan was not going to be able to move the ball on the ground against the Utes, he changed his play calling. He made it more into a drop back passing scenario, allowed Stephen Three to do what he was more accustomed to doing, and was able to move the ball a little bit. Now, they still lost the game. But what I'm encouraged about Rich Rodriguez is that he saw what was happening and he adjusted in the game to the right adjustments. Now, his players still can't execute that. But Rodriguez is doing his level best to not stand pat. And taking care of the football would help, too, which they did not do against Notre Dame in the loss to the Fighting Irish. Rick Neuheisel, I don't know how you grade his progress. He got a great big giant A-plus for the opening night win over Tennessee, and then two big fat Fs followed it. Right. And, Reese, I think this is another one where you look at what he's doing with the culture. What New Heisel does is instill a, an infectious enthusiasm, just a relentless positive spirit into that team. And the fact that they were able to knock off Tennessee was miraculous for a lot of reasons, but it allowed New Heisel some breathing room. Because I think what we've seen in the last couple of weeks is what we'll see from UCLA for the rest of the season. They're not very good. They're working on their third and fourth quarterbacks because their top two were hurt preseason, for goodness sake. And then Khalil Bell and others that are supposed to be staples and stars for this team right. have struggled with injury as well. And so I think that spoonful of sugar, that Tennessee victory, will help the medicine go down over the rest of this season. And that relentless, relentless positiveness of Neuheisel is exactly what this program needs right now. That's what Rick has been saying. We just try to get it into the fourth quarter and see if we can pull it out then. Bobby Petrino at Arkansas, offensive guru. Guru, lost a lot of offensive players coming in from the previous regime of Houston Nutt. How do you gauge his progress? Well, it's, it's hard to say because you shouldn't struggle to beat Western Illinois and Louisiana Monroe. And Louisiana Monroe 
And the problem is that this is an organization, a team, Arkansas, that is accustomed to run blocking. They're used to Darren McFadden and Felix Jones. I mean, it's hard to remember an Arkansas program without those two running backs. But now they're gone to the NFL, and you've got an offensive line that now is having to reset and learn how to pass block much, much more than they've ever had to do. You've got Casey Dick, a quarterback, who is used to handing off to those guys, and he's having to learn how to throw the football from the pocket. Now, he's thrown for a lot of yards, but he's also thrown for a lot of interceptions. He had two interceptions against Alabama last week returned for touchdowns and so it's hard to gauge how well Petrino's doing here because the pieces are all square pegs he's trying to wedge into round holes and the, the results so far have not been promising and he's got Michigan transfer Ryan Mallett coming eligible next season to run that high-powered offense that was so explosive at Louisville next up we'll bring back Reese Davis he'll be with Mark May to break down yet another top-ranked team going down to an unranked team that and plenty more coming up back the Beavers spring a trap and shock the college football world. Certainly a shocker in Corvallis on Thursday night. The question was how easy was USC going to make it look this season? But now the question becomes do they still have a shot at a national title? And why does this keep happening? Classes have yet to start at Oregon State and that's a good thing because nobody would make it on Friday morning after what happened in Corvallis on Thursday night. Oregon State stunning number one USC 27 21 setting off an orange sea of joy in Reeser Stadium after a virtuoso performance by freshman running back Quiz Rogers Reese Davis Mark May here Mark we really ought to be used to this after the way last season ended number one and number two kept losing in fact seven times last season a team ranked in the top two of the AP poll got beaten by an unranked team but what went wrong for USC Thursday night? Well, everything went wrong offensively, defensively, special teams wise. But the bottom line, if you look what happened at Oregon State, this is a team that came out and decided we're going to hang our hat on the running game and our offensive line. And Jacquez Rogers, the 37 carries, 186 yards and two touchdowns, set the tempo early. He's so small. He's five foot six, 190 pounds. You can't find him in the backfield behind 300 pound linemen. And every time the USC defenders came up to try to make a tackle, he's so strong. And so powerful it took two or three defenders to bring him down and he never went down on first contact in this game and I think he set the tempo right up front for the entire Oregon State football team still early in the season we are likely to see a lot more upsets of highly ranked teams but the Pac-10 is perceived to be down now. Mm -hmm. What does this do for USC's hopes of getting back into it? It moves them to the back of the pack. And right now you're looking at teams like Florida, Georgia from the SEC. You're looking at the Big 12, Missouri, Oklahoma. Right now they're feeling pretty good about themselves. But for USC, this loss could drop them out of the top 10. And also it could hurt them if you have a slew of one-loss teams at the end. But by virtue of what happened on Thursday night in Corvallis, it's no guarantee they'll just end up with one loss. And remember, we had a two-loss team win the national championship last year. Craziness, it started now that we've reached fall as Oregon State knocks off USC. It's been a while since the Syracuse Orange had a team that had national attention. They even had a different nickname back then. No longer are there players like Donovan McNabb, Marvin Harrison, and Dwight Freeney getting the Carrier Dome jazzed up on a Saturday afternoon. With Big E's schedule set to get underway, you've got to wonder how much worse can it get before it gets better. They're not making major motion pictures about football at Rutgers or UConn. Look at that young man go! The Express immortalizes Syracuse football. It's the story of Ernie Davis, who followed the incomparable Jim Brown and preceded the incandescent Floyd Little. We've had great teams, great tradition over the years. We've played in many bowls. The Express may be on schedule to become a box office success. And this one's in the books. The Orange with a stunning loss fall to Akron. Meanwhile, the Syracuse football program is careening off the track at breakneck speed. I don't see the competitive spirit that I'd like to see. I don't see the hitting that I'd like to see. You know, I don't see the intensity that I'd like to see. So it's not just a matter of losing, it's sort of the way we lose. It doesn't really give you any hope. Hope vanished September 6th during a 42-28 thrashing at home by the University of Akron, a team picked to finish dead last in the Mid-American Conference. Fire Robinson! Fire 
As the coach at Syracuse, if you play Akron a thousand times, how many times do you expect to win? I don't know. I think that that's, uh, we, we expect to win a lot more than we lose. I expect a thousand. Daryl Gross is the athletic director at Syracuse. We're Syracuse. We should beat Akron. It's that simple. Gross left USC after two national championships and hired Greg Robinson in January of 2005. Since both arrived four seasons ago, Syracuse is in the throes of the worst chapter in the 120 year history of this program. Who is most responsible for this mess? Greg Robinson. On question, Greg Robinson. Axeman at ESPNRadio1260.com. Brent Axe is a radio talk show host in Syracuse. George W. Bush has better approval ratings right now than, than Greg Robinson has. For a school that puts stars like Marvin Harrison, Donovan McNabb, and Dwight Freeney into the NFL, the most startling recent change has been a lack of talent. Syracuse used to snap its fingers and practically handpick the best talent in New Jersey. But things have changed. Schools that Syracuse fans used to laugh at are now beating the orange to players they used to count on. Other teams in the Big East kind of got their act together. Greg Schiano built up the program and started taking some of those players. The quality of players that you can only attract are the ones that nobody else wants. You can have limited talent and make good tackles. You, know, you can have limited talent and you can fight your butt off. They know from the deepest part of their heart that I'm giving it everything I got. I think Jim Brown knows that. I, I think Floyd Little, they know that. That doesn't, that doesn't satisfy what they'd like, but I think to a man, they know that I'm busting my tail to get it done. All I'll simply say is that the football is bad and we definitely have to do something about it. Well, that's all the time we have for the ESPN360.com Halftime Report. I'm Paul Severino. Let's get you back out to the field for the second half. The Liberty Mutual Coach of the Year Award is given to the college football coach in each division who delivers results while demonstrating sportsmanship, integrity, responsibility, and excellence both on and off the field. Go to coachoftheyear.com and vote for the coach you think deserves to win in 2008. You know he's feeling great being back at middle linebacker. He's played there the last three seasons, getting an opportunity to go back and play some Micah Johnson now. Well, Bobby Rainey, boy, he can run with it, can he? Bobby Rainey's looked excellent. He's been the whole offense for Western Kentucky today, almost uh, 80 yards. Rushing. And of course it was Derek Locke who took the kick a couple of yards deep in the end zone and brought it all the way back. Oh, you could tell when he got across the 40 yard line or so there was no way they were going to catch him. It's so much fun to watch Derek Locke get out in the open field like that and we get a chance to see all that speed that we've been hearing so much about. And the first half statistics as the Wildcats have run it for only 69 yards they've passed it for just 77. And both offenses trying to find themselves coming into this game, Tim. They're still trying to find themselves. They're still trying to find themselves. There's still a lot of questions to be answered. You see Western Kentucky minus four yards passing at the break, one of eight on third down conversion. So Kentucky's defense in the secondary is doing a great job. So they just got they just got to really uh, contain Bobby Rainey here in the second half on the ground. And the Wildcats will get the football to start the second half. Kentucky leading Western 17 to 3. Alfonso Smith, Derek Locke back to return the kickoff for the Cats. As Tanner Seward, who kicked a 50 yard field goal in the first half for the only Hilltopper points, puts his foot into the ball. Well, well, let's see what he can do this time. Over to the far side of the field goes Derek Locke on the return. Gets it over the 25 and the Wildcats will go to work with it around their own 27 yard line first and 10. Now, Kentucky was pretty conservative with Mike Hartline in the first half throwing a lot of quick short passing routes a lot of quick hitches a lot of swings to the running backs out of the backfield. I'd like to see him get a little more aggressive throwing the football down the field in this half. Hard line was intercepted once in the first half. That on a tip ball was picked off by Marcus Minor. 
as the Western defense got its seventh interception of the season. Hartline under center here on first and ten from the 27. Alfonso Smith through a hole all the way to the 44 yard line. 17 yards on the run by Alfonso Smith. Strong safety Ryan Beer brought him down along with Travis Waters. You see Alfonso Smith, another quick, powerful, elusive back the Wildcats have. He's fresh. He's got, you see, the, the bye week gave him some fresh legs there. He gets that thing up in there and gets a nice game for the Wildcats. A good start for the running game right at the beginning of the third quarter. Here's Hartline. Throwing here to E.J. Adams in the Hilltopper territory, and they throw him down to the 42. L.J. Harbison on the stop. E.J. Adams, the junior out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. He uses those quick hitch routes I was talking about. Kentucky were throwing all the first half. This time, E.J. Adams able to get up the field and make a little, uh, make a little something happen after the catch. 14 yards on the pass from Hartline to Adams. From the Western 42, Dickie Lyons Jr. trying to get a block. Goes inside the 40 and fights his way forward close to the 35-yard line. Marcus Miner and Ryan Beard on the tackle for Western. Dickie Lyons, who caught 12 passes last week or two weeks ago against Middle Tennessee as you look at David Olson over on the far sidelines. Yeah, Dickie Lyons been completely their most consistent receiver all season long guy out there with the most experience so that's what you'd expect out of Dickey Lyons Jr. This time Lyons sets up here in a slot to the left side and he goes in motion and up the middle Alfonso Smith breaks free over the 20 10 touchdown. Well we talked about getting the running game going. Alfonso Smith just exploding here at the start of the third quarter and Demario Ford throwing a pretty good block for him on this touchdown run. Yeah good to see Kentucky finally getting this running game going. You never see a long run in this level of college football without a good block by the wide receiver and Demario Ford seals the outside right there for Alfonso Smith to get that edge and when he gets out there he's another burner and he's a 4 2 guy in the 40 yard dash just like Derek Locke so either one of those guys in the open field you're not going to catch him. 35 yards on the run by Smith and the conversion by Lona Sieber is through the uprights. Timeout on the field with 13 21 to go third quarter and the Wildcats now leading comfortably in this one. It's Kentucky 24 Western Kentucky 3. At the conclusion of tonight's game, we will be selecting the Bridgestone Firestone SNS Tire Wildcat Player of the Game. That's the Wildcat Player of the Game brought to you by Bridgestone Firestone and SNS Tire. Back at Commonwealth Stadium, the Wildcat fans are happy because their team has its biggest lead of the night at 24 to 3. And Tim Couch here at the start of this third quarter, Rich Brooks gives. Alfonso Smith his chance he makes the most of it. Yeah it looked like Rich Brooks went into the locker room at halftime and said hey you guys aren't going to get me anything on the ground I'm going to give the ball to Alfonso Smith see what he can do and Alfonso responds and that's how you take advantage of opportunities at this level of play in the SEC when you get, get an opportunity like Alfonso Smith was given you take advantage like that and you see more playing time and more carries. It did not take long four plays 73 yards. Maste kicking into the wind. Here comes Bobby Rainey from about the goal line over the making the most of it again is Bobby Rainey. He gets 38 yards on the return before he's finally run out of bounds by guess who Alfonso Smith. Well, I'll tell you Bobby Rainey has looked so impressive tonight. He's he's doing everything. He's getting the yards on the ground for this team. He's running back kicks as you see him here getting up in the seam. He, he's reading his blocks. He's so elusive. You see some Kentucky's best players trying to get a, a hold of this guy and finally Alfonso Smith is able, able to wrangle him on the sideline there. Yeah, he ran back three kickoffs and there went over Murray State last week for 137 yards. One of them was a 92 yarder all the way to the Murray State one. From the 38. Why not give it to Rainey spinning trying to find some running room doing everything he can to find a yard and finds the going very tough because Marcus McClinton and Braxton Kelly 
came up there for the Wildcat defense. Yeah, Western using that play that they used pretty successfully in the first half with Bobby Rainey on the handoff out of the shotgun, but Kentucky's really clued in on that play when he's back in that formation. Hasn't been an easy night for KJ Black throwing the ball. He came in here tonight. I'd missed the last two games with a separated shoulder, but he was completing 63 percent. He did 24 of 38 for 269 yards. Throwing here on second and nine, and it's tipped incomplete. There's a Wildcat defender, Sam Maxwell, there was able to get up and get a hand on it. I think I think the biggest problem that Black is having tonight is not necessarily throwing the ball. You know the coverage is good down the field, but it's the pressure that the front four is getting on. And Corey Peters, Jeremy Jarman, they're forcing him to throw the football before he wants to, and that's the biggest problem going on for him tonight. Well, and this Commonwealth Stadium crowd coming to life now on third down. Black kept it. Paul down short of the 45 yard line by David Jones, the senior out of a red jacket, West Virginia. So the Hilltoppers miss fire on their first offensive series of this second half. And they'll have to give it up, trailing in the game 24 to 3. David Elson is an assistant at Western prior to replacing. Jack Harbaugh is the head coach in 2003. He was a graduate assistant at Southern Illinois for a couple of years before he went on Harbaugh's staff. Spent seven years as an assistant coach at Western Kentucky. Dickie Lyons Jr. from the 19. Slips a tackle and then goes down at the 26-27 yard line. So the Wildcat offense will come back on the field when we return. 11.32 to go third quarter. Kentucky on top of Western, 24-3. The best coverage of the Wildcats is online at the official site of University of Kentucky Sports, UKAthletics.com. Rosters, photo galleries, schedule scores, live audio of every Big Blue Sports Network broadcast. You can get it all at UKAthletics.com. A buzz goes through the crowd because they have just put up on the scoreboard that Alabama leads Georgia 31 to nothing. Wow, shocking. First and ten. Here's Hartline swinging it to uh, Connor out of the backfield. He's over the 40. And he's got a first down and a whole lot more across the 45 yard line before Blake Boyd finally got him. John Connor. You see Mike Hartline, he just sees a zone. They're just dropping everyone back in coverage. No one to cover the fullback, John Connor. And he's not going to go out of bounds there on the sideline. He's going to cut that thing and try to get some contact, get as many yards as he can out of that play. Credit Eric Adiemi, the freshman, with a good block on that play. That's what Rich Brooks wants to see out of his receivers. First and 10, the Cats from their own 45. And. They hand it off right up the middle just to keep it on the ground as Derek Locke has returned to the Wildcat backfield. A short game, then Sauters on the tackle. Down to the field to Drew Diener. Well, guys, keep an eye on Mike Hartline. In the last series, he came over and asked the trainer to take a look at him. He was concerned about his shoulder. They looked at him, checked him out, said he's fine. That's just part of playing football. You're going to get a hit like this as uh, he is certainly back there under center, made a nice throw that last play. But keep an eye out for that shoulder, which, Tim, as you know, uh, is to be tough to deal with as a quarterback. Yeah, that's the last thing you want as a quarterback is a shoulder injury. So we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on Mike as the game progresses. Now they hand it off to Adiemi this time, coming around, and he's got the first and 10. Down in the Hilltopper territory at the 41. Well, they handed it to Derek Locke on the last play. Faked it to Adiemi. This time they gave it to Adiemi. Sauters again on the tackle. I'll tell you, Rob, Demario Ford is taking people out. He's doing a great job of blocking down the field. Unfortunately, someone's hurt here, but he really got a good clean shot on him there as he peeled back to block. All right, timeout with 10.24 to go, third quarter. We'll return to Commonwealth Stadium with Kentucky leading Western 24-3. to Whitaker Bank will donate $50 to the UK Library Fund for every field goal attempt in tonight's game. Whitaker Bank, they have your financial goals in mind. 
Western player injured on the play was Rashad Etheridge. And he now makes his way off the field. A junior out of St. Petersburg, Florida, appeared to be in some pain when he was down here on the near side of the field. And he makes his way to the Hilltopper locker room. He's not gone to the sidelines. He's headed uh, to the locker room. Yeah, it looks like he's got a shoulder injury there. They're pretty tender with that shoulder, so I'm sure he's going in for some x-rays to, to see what's going on with that shoulder. Well, here in this third quarter, and we're still in the early stages of the third quarter, the Wildcats have moved the football. Derek Locke bounces off a tackle. Has another go at it, gets it inside the 35 yard line. Ryan Beard, the strong safety, came up to make the stop for Western. Well, I'll tell you, Rob, you wonder how this offense was going to come, offensive line was going to come out and play after the injuries to Jared Jeffries, but Billy Joe Murphy has stepped in nicely. He had some experience playing when Gary Williams was injured, so he's really stepped in and done a nice job moving around right tackle, left tackle for this offensive line. Billy Joe Murphy, the Red shirt freshman out of Moreau, Moreau County has been in there. This is second down and three as they've got it now at the topper 34. Lock right up the middle gets up a full head of steam and they push him back. He's short of the first down sticks. I'm sure they'll mark what that one short. There's Billy Joe Murphy 52. Robert Dark made the tackle. Dark is senior out of Burlington, North Carolina, out of Hibbing Community College up in Minnesota. He came here tonight with three sacks on the season. Third down, short yardage, 30 yard from the 32. Well, they left it up to Derek Locke to get the first and ten, and he did just that. Blake Boyd, the outside linebacker, their second leading tackler, makes the stop. We got a penalty marker, drop back at the 35. Illegal shift on the offense. Two men moving at the same time. Penalty five yards. Down remains third. Uh, just a mistake that you don't like to see. You've got the first and ten there on the carry by Derek Locke. That's going to be third and six. Yeah, this is the type of thing that drives Joker Phillips crazy. Mike Hartline trying to send a guy in motion. They both come in motion. You just got to be on the same page as those, those wide receivers need to know who he's communicating with right there because it just calls Kentucky a first down. Joker Phillips, the Cats offensive coordinator up here in the booth in the press box as that'll mark it back now to the 37. 24 to 3 Kentucky. It was 17 to 3 at halftime. Derek Locke really electrifying this crowd with a 100 yard kickoff return in the second quarter, which at the time gave the Wildcats their biggest lead of the night. And then here in the third period, it's been, well, on the opening drive, Alfonso Smith with a 35 yard touchdown run to put Kentucky up 24 to 3. Now we're set to go. Third down, six. Ball was tipped. Western put on a big rush. And I think somebody got somebody got a hand up and batted it away. I couldn't quite tell who. Might have been Dan Klein, the defensive end. Good job by Western Kentucky right there. There. Kentucky was in a, a third and six situation. You know, they're right on the ball range. They bring the blitz trying to get a sack to knock Kentucky out of range. They don't get quite to Mike Hartline to get the blitz, but they do uh, knock the ball down and force the punt. So Ted Lotchka now, pooch punter for the Cats, will uh, drop back from midfield. And he sends it high into the air. Fair catch called for by Rainey. Dropped the ball. Fight for it. Rainey was able to hang on to it at the 19 yard line. So Western will take over first and 10. Maurice Gritter downfield on special teams coverage for the Wildcats. Here on the Big Blue Sports Network, we will bring you UK volleyball action. That will be coming up on Sunday, October 5th, as the Wildcats, who have been red hot lately, take on Auburn. Sunday, October 5th, here on the Big Blue Sports Network, 
check your local listings for the time in your area. Down to the field to Drew Dinner. First half, the issue with Ashton Cobb, uh, he has had a legal issue. Rich Brooks is going to address it in the post-game news conference, not here on the sidelines. As you mentioned, legal issue going to be addressed after the game. Thank you, Drew. As on first and ten, K.J. Black comes out throwing. He gets it to Brad Savko, a junior out of Louisville. Robbie McAtee on the coverage, and Savko now checks out. They send Tristan Jones in here at tight end. Cooper will stay in the game. When Terrence Cooper, who came in here tonight with nine catches on the season for 155 yards, haven't seen much of him this evening. And on second down, they run it. Rainey carries up to the 27 yard line. That'll still be shy of a first down. And it will bring up third down and short. Corey Peters on the tackle for the Wildcats. I think at some point here, Western is going to have to show a little confidence in KJ Black and let him start throwing the football down the field. You're down 24 to 3 with a little over seven minutes left to go in the third quarter. You got to start making some plays down the field. Kentucky is really keyed in to the little inside draw handoff to Bobby Rennie right now. Jake Gabler checks in for Western. Missed the last couple of games with an injury. He's shut off to the left side of the field as Black out of the shotgun looks near side and does a great piece of running to get the first and 10 over the 35 yard line to the 37 before Matt Lentz finally brought him down. Nice job by KJ Black. Excellent job from KJ Black here. The key to running a quarterback draw is your eyes. You see him hold the, the whole defense as he looks down. It looked like a pass and all of a sudden he just finds a hole and does a great piece of running right there to pick up. as we've gone past the midway point of this third quarter. Kentucky comfortably in front, 24 to 3. Black out of the shotgun. Big rush, look at Corey Peters. Well, he still had a defender in front of him and was still coming, just moving forward. I'm telling you, this front four from Kentucky is relentless right now. Corey Peters is just all over the place. Being blocked, he's still strong enough to reach around Grab K.J. Black by the shoulder and take him down. Just shows a lot of power, a lot of strength from Corey Peters. That's his second sack on the night as well. That was Shelly Anthony, 58, a freshman out of Fairburn, Georgia, the right side guard that he was just moving backward. Loss of eight at his second and 18. Back to the 29-yard line. Now Black lets this one go. That's about all he did overthrown Gabler was out there the intended receiver Matt Lentz on the coverage incomplete it brings up third down and long. Yeah, it looked like a little miscommunication there with uh, KJ Black and his wide receiver down the field KJ looked like he wanted him to go to the corner the receiver went to the post as you see the Aaron throw. So the Western offense continues to struggle it has produced five first downs here tonight. They have only two passing yards. 110 yards on the ground. Third down, 18. Winquell Graves. The gain will be to the 35 yard line, way short of a first down. Braxton Kelly on the tackle, and Western will have to give it up again. Braxton Kelly looking really comfortable back at middle linebacker in, in the replace of Micah Johnson. You know, he, he played there the last three seasons at middle linebacker, so he knows his position very well. As you see him in perfect, perfect position to make the play on the wide receiver bubble screen. He knows this play is coming. They like to run it on third and long, and he's out there waiting on it to stop it. Jeremy Moore, the junior out of Indianapolis, to punt it away, standing at his 21. Dickie Lyons is back around the Kentucky 25. A little rush, big kick. Best kick of the night by Moore. Lyons all the way back to the 10, finds some room on the far sidelines. And down the far sidelines goes Dickie Lyons. All the way across midfield to the Hilltopper 45-yard line. And it was the putter, Jeremy Moore, who knocked him down. 
obviously a flag Dickey Lyons as he got up and a little bit of frustration because he didn't break it for a touchdown. He spikes the ball at the end of the play which is going to bring that play back a little bit. But Dickey Lyons just does a great job reading his block gets up the field and he's upset at himself for not scoring. So you see him spike the ball and you know Dickey knows better than that. He's just a little frustrated with not taking that one to the house. Uh, you know Jeremy Moore does a good job on coverage and he did the job there to simply knock Lions down because Tim there was no one else After down the, the sidelines. On fourth and light, number 12 threw the ball down and spiked it. It will be 15 yards first down Kentucky. Dickey comes to the sidelines and Rich Brooks is right there to meet him. Yeah you see Dickey Lyons here. He, he knows that he had an opportunity to get one back for a touchdown. They've been on him in the punt coverage pretty good here. They Western Kentucky is doing a great job of getting down covering and Rich Brooks is not happy with Dickey Lyons and Dickey knows better than that and uh, you know he's just getting a little frustrated with the he wanted to make a big play in front of his home crowd. The Wildcats most experienced receiver he makes the spectacular catches but after practice one day this week Rich Brooks says I I'm not sure if I'm ever going to get everything I want out of Dickie Lyons. <laughs> well you get it you get a little bit of everything with Dickie Lyons and you know he he does some excellent things on the football field and you know he, he's a tough kid. I, I would love to have Dickie on my team if I was a quarterback because he's going to run the right run the right routes. He's a tough kid but you know also you're going to have some emotion out there as well with Dickie Lyons. He's a player. Great kid to be around. He really is. In his senior season, I tell you, he's one of those guys, one of those guys you're going to miss. First and 10 from the 39 after the penalty, and the pass is cut by E.J. Adams at the 45 yard line. That'll be a gain of about six. Penalty marker down. Drop back at the 30 yard line. And the initial indication is against Western Kentucky. Jihad Morris on the tackle on the last play for the Toppers. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 96 on the defense. Took two more steps, hit the quarterback, added on to the end of the run. First step. Big penalty on Western called on Kyle Anderson, their defensive end. Yeah, big penalty on Kyle Anderson right here. A racing Dickey Lyons penalty was spiking the ball. So Dickey being the kind of kid he is, he'll probably tell Rich Brooks, see, coach, I knew they were going to get a penalty on the next play to make up for that. So that's why he spiked the ball. <laughs> <laughs> it all worked out. It all worked out. Down to the 38 now of Western Kentucky with a 24 to 3 lead in this game as we get near the four minute mark. Hartline throwing deep. Tried to get it to Lions down inside the five, and Jihad Morris was right there with him. I think the crowd wanted a flag, but they're not getting it. Yeah, I think that was good coverage from Jihad Morris right there. He was step for step with Dickey Lyons. You know, I like the aggressiveness from Kentucky taking a shot down the field. We hadn't seen it all night. Mike Hartline puts the ball in a great spot where Dickey catches that football, or no one does, and just great coverage from Moore right there. No pass interference. Second down and 10 from the Western 38 as Hartline goes under center. Put Connor back in there at fullback. And it's taken in by the tight end Maurice Grinner, the junior out of Louisville Fairdale. Ryan Beard, the strong safety on the stop. Big gain as it goes down to the 15 yard line. And another Wildcat first down here with 4.07 to go in the quarter. Yeah, excellent job for Mike Hartline. He finds Maurice Grinner on a corner route right here, and he does a good thing by driving the football on him, not hanging it and put too much air, giving the defense any time to react to that football. 21 yards. Hartline is now thrown for 147 on the night. He's 15 of 25. First and 10 of the 15. Big rush throwing to the end zone. Incomplete. Kyle Anderson was the guy really applying the pressure as Hartline tried to find Grinner in the end zone. Yeah, good, good job from Kyle Anderson right here. It made Mike Hartline kind of force this throw to Maurice Grinner. He's not open. He actually had John Connor in the flat right there. And if Kyle Anderson wasn't in Mike Hartline's face, I'm sure Mike would have got down to his third read on that play. 
Second down and ten from the 15. And this time it's Alfonso Smith with a good hard run. Blake Boyd on the tackle. They spot it across the 10 yard line. Call it a gain of about six. They got third and five. It's a short five because the ball spotted inside the 10 yard line. They got to get it down just inside the Western six to pick up a first down. Alfonso Smith, only his fourth carry. He's already chalked up 61 yards, including a 35 yard touchdown run. Third down, Hartline to throw, under a rush. Caught by Alfonso Smith. He's got the first down inside the five. Blake Boyd on the tackle, but it's first and goal for the Wildcats. Wildcats, Wildcats are doing a great job of utilizing the talents of Alfonso Smith. You see, as Rob mentioned, he has four carries for 61 yards. Now they throw him the football out of the backfield down here going into the goal line, and he shows good hands and secures the football, taking a big hit from Blake Boyd. And Alfonso Smith to the sidelines. It looks like they put Tony Dixon back in now. Tony Dixon. Oh, he is hit and jolted immediately. Alonzo Higgins, the inside linebacker, came rocketing through there. The senior out of Greenwood, South Carolina. It's their leading tackler coming into the game with 30 stops, and he immediately met Tony Dixon. Well, that was a collision right there. Alonzo Higgins came in and made a great play. Good job from uh, uh, Tony Dixon, I believe it was on the game right there. Tony Dixon is just spinning off there and trying to get a little extra yards after initial contact. He did well to get a yard. It's at the two, second and goal. Hard line. Touchdown. Sal Allen was lined up in the backfield along with Dixon and the sophomore out of New Orleans gets the touchdown catch and it's 30 to 3 Kentucky. For that next great moment you don't want to miss, go to StubHub.com and buy the tickets you want, even if the event is sold out. Or sell your tickets on StubHub.com and share an experience that will live on. Are these great seats or what? SEC. Truckers. Version by Sieber gets through the left corner of the upright good. I think so, Rob. I think with the, with the way the uh, Cats are running the football this half has really opened things up and made Mike Hartline's job a lot easier. And this is what Kentucky offense was supposed to look like coming into the season. Lona Sieber is coming to the sidelines. He's not missed an extra point all year. Be sure to join UK head coach Rich Brooks Monday night, 6 o'clock Eastern, for the Rich Brooks Radio Show. Monday night at 6 on the Big Blue Sports Network. Let's go down on the field to Drew Diener. Drew? Well, I'm down, down here on the sidelines. Maybe we'll get a shot up here in a second, but I'm down here with Craig Geese, the guy certainly Tim Couch up there in our booth knows a little bit about. Craig, talk about these young receivers for Kentucky. What are some of the issues they're going through right now? Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, they're a good group. Uh, they're a little young. I think what they need to do is just settle down and just when the play comes to them, just make the play and, and get the ball off the field and score a touchdown in time or two. You know, Dickie Lyons is like you're a guy under six feet tall catching a lot of passes. How are you guys able to catch so many balls? Uh, I think it's just, uh, you know, Dickie had a father that, uh, you know, he kind of grew up around the games. So you learn a lot. You know, I had a lot of uncles, a lot of family. I was around the game. You know, being a little guy, you have a little man complex just a bit <laughs> out on the field because everybody thinks they can push you around. So I think it's just that feel that you have and uh, just knowing where to be and when to be and, and how to be there. Okay, you want to send thing up to Tim up in the booth? You want to have, you know, make him thank you for all those short passes you turned into long touchdowns? Look right in that camera and say something to him. Hey, you're doing a good job, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know he wants to say more than that, Drew. He hey. wants to, but I guess he's going to keep quiet down here. Yeah, yeah hey. I better keep quiet. I don't, want, I don't want him to beat me up. <laughs> the kick by Tim missed past day, and here comes Bobby Rainey again. Through the hole, there he goes, over the 40. Bobby Rainey hauled off from behind on the 25-yard line.
be raining. It's almost almost beginning to be the Devin Hester situation in the NFL where you just can't kick the ball to this guy anymore. I don't know how many yards he has on kickoff returns right now, but he's been explosive. And if it wasn't for the great effort from Trevard Lindley right there running him down, he was taking that thing in for six. But as you see him again, finds another a small little crease. And he's very electric. He gets up in there, and once he gets in the open field, Tim Massey is not going to catch him. Luckily for Kentucky, Trevard Lindley was on the field and able to run him down. Well, Bobby Rainey has just been something else for the Hilltoppers here tonight. The return all the way down to the 26 yard line. KJ Black running left inside the 25 to the 24 where Matt Lentz made the tackle. Uh, good to see Matt Lentz making a tackle. You know, Kentucky is starting Matt Lentz at strong safety this week because they're trying to get a little bit more consistency. And the coaches feel he brings that to that defense where he's going to be doing the right assignment. He's going to be in the right spot each and every play. Well, down 31 to 3 in this game. Western really needing a lift. And again, Rainey gives it to him with a big kickoff return to the Wildcat 26 yard line. And now. Nowhere to go. Trying to reverse his field in the backfield here is Andrew McLeod. We saw him in the first half. He's out of Harrodsburg, Kentucky, a junior brought down by Jeremy Jarman. Uh, Jeremy Jarman's played an excellent game here tonight. Had a sack on the first drive. He's made some good plays, good discipline plays, and staying at home, but the play goes away from him. Play action, he's staying at home and, do, and playing his position well tonight. Third down, 11. Can they capitalize on the big return by Rainey? 20 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Black on the run. Incomplete. He had 112 graves over there on the far sidelines. Randall Burden back there covering, but against KJ Black was under pressure. Yeah, KJ Black just he really just doesn't have a chance tonight in the passing game because Kentucky's front four, you know, I've said it all night, but they're just relentless at getting after the quarterback, and he he just doesn't have an opportunity to set his feet and step into any throws tonight. Down to 11 seconds now, left third period, and fourth down 11. I'm gonna try a field goal here. Moore got one through from 50 yards, or I bet your beg your pardon, Tanner Seward got one through from 50 yards earlier. This is a 45 yard attempt, and it's no good. So Tanner Seward, now one for two, but he has accounted for the only Western Kentucky points in this game. It is 31 to 3. Yeah, tough break for Tanner Seward. As you look back at the kickoff, by Bobby Rainey the play that Trevard Lindley made to run him down and get a tackle right there really came up huge for the Wildcats as they ended up not giving away any points on that drive. On the Wildcat offense back on the field Kentucky was up 17 three at halftime it's now 31 to three. As the Cats have put two touchdowns on the board here in this third quarter. Tony Dixon. Running room to the right side. Well, not very much as the Hilltoppers close it off quickly. Marcus Miner on the stop. It'll be second down for the Cats as we come back and begin the fourth quarter of play. And heading to the fourth, Kentucky 31, Western Kentucky 3. Here at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, we're heading into the fourth quarter. Rob Bromley along with Tim Couch. Kentucky leading Western Kentucky 31 to 3. Other scores tonight from the Southeastern Conference. Third quarter, LSU 24, Mississippi State 10. And Alabama all over the Georgia Bulldogs. 31 to nothing in the third quarter. Kentucky goes to Tuscaloosa next weekend. Going to be a tough place to play in Tuscaloosa because Alabama's in in between the hedges right now. Georgia putting it on them. Second down and four as we begin the fourth and the pass taken in. And it looked like that might have been Aaron Boyd. Is that 22? Yes, it was. Aaron Boyd, the freshman out of Lexington, Henry Clay makes the catch. Jihad Morris on the tackle. That's good to see the big fella get in and get a little action, catches a quick little hitch route, able to turn it out, get a first down for the Wildcats. 
slowed during the preseason by a bout with mononucleosis, but has overcome that and gets the catch here as we start the fourth quarter. First and ten for the Cats. Now at their own 39 yard line. As Hartline here appears to chuck off as he goes under center. Tony Dixon. Down the sidelines, he stepped out of bounds. Right around midfield, or shortly after he crossed the midfield stripe, Jihad Morris again there over to run him out of bounds. Well, I think, as you see, Kentucky come out in the second half, and they're running the football so effectively. This is what makes the quarterback's job so easy. When you when your running backs are picking up nine yards on first down, it's so easy to go ahead and convert this second or third down, and it just makes life for a quarterback so much better. Credit a nine-yard gain. They marked him out of the Wildcat 48. It's still a yard short of the first. After a gain of nine. Well, I think he got enough for the first down. Tony Dixon again. It is a first and ten. The indication by referee Penn Wagers. Kyle Anderson, the defensive end on the tackle. Tony Dixon was running for 43 here tonight on 12 carries. Alfonso Smith has 61 yards on four carries. He had the 35 yard touchdown run. Derek Lockett eight carries 34 yards. And the turtle. Monsal Allen through a hole down close to the 40 yard line. And that's close to another Wildcat first down. Yeah, this is exactly what Kentucky wanted to use the turtle for Monsell Allen. They come in at they come at you with those fast elusive Dixon Locke, Smith all game long and then they bring in the bruiser to close this game out in the fourth quarter and when these defensive backs are tired this is the last thing they want to see is a fresh Monsell Allen running at them. Monsell just 5 7 but 225 pounds of muscle. But here he goes again through a hole. The turtle runs it down inside the 30, close to the 27 yard line. Another Kentucky first down. Marcus Miner on the stop for the toppers. Yeah, I'll tell you, Robert, as we've seen Monsell Allen play more of the season against Norfolk State, he was very impressive. Again, another opportunity tonight, getting it up in the hole, making some things happen in the running game, taking advantage of his opportunities as well. 13 yards on the gain. It's now at the 28 yard line of Western Kentucky. On this drive, it has been all on the ground. As here goes Allen again with blockers in front. Not much room this time, just across the 25 yard line before Miner comes in again and makes the stop. Check in with Drew down on the field. Drew? Well, guys, another injury update. Demario Ford got his bell rung. He is uh, on the sidelines. They are probably not going to let him back into this game. It doesn't look like as uh, he had concussion-like symptoms. That's not saying necessarily that he has a concussion, but they do not expect to see him back in this game as he is on the sidelines. Thank you, Drew. Second down, six yards to go. As it's just shy of the Western 24-yard line. Allen trying to find a hole. It closes up quickly on him. The linebacker, L.J. Harbison, number 42, closed on him quickly. And that'll bring up third down. Kentucky just content to keep it on the ground here with a 31-3 lead. Still a long way to go. we got 11 and a half minutes left to go in this ball game. Rushing yards, Cats have now... Got it to 192 Western just over 100 third down and five from the 23. Allen. Over the 15 down to the 12 yard line first and 10 for the Cats. Jahad Morris made the tackle, but it's another Wildcat first down, and Monsell Allen has done it all on this drive. Well, I really like this play call. What Mark Hartline did here, he saw a blitz coming to his left side. He looks over to Coach Randy Sanders on the sidelines. Sanders sees it as well. They call a screen pass right into the blitz. Perfect play call in that situation. 11 yards on the gain. It's down to the Hilltopper 12. With Monsell Allen again. Through a hole to the five and barreling his way forward inside the three yard line. 
before Ryan Beard, the strong safety, wrestled him to the ground. Yeah, good job from Ryan Beard getting Monsell to the ground because when he gets ahead of steam coming at you, he's a load. As you see at the end of this run, he's the one delivering the blow, not vice versa. As you see him just finishing off that run. Good job of holding on, taking him down by Ryan Beard. Stuart Hines, number 70, has come in there at an offensive guard spot. As we go under ten and a half minutes here at Commonwealth Stadium, Kentucky appearing to about to add to a 31 to 3 lead, and it is a touchdown. Tony Dixon finishing it off. After Monsell Allen did all the work on the drive, but it was Tony who took it over. Yeah, Tony, Tony reaping the benefits of uh, Monsell's work there, and uh, you know, I think that's exactly what Kentucky wanted to do on that drive: is go out and say, "Hey, we can, we, we're going to run the football almost every play on this drive," and they were able to do that thanks to Monsell Allen and that big, strong offensive line. I didn't think he was going to get into the end zone there, but he got hit, and then he just fell backwards over the pile and went in. Yeah, great second effort there from Tony Dixon. Sieber with a conversion. And you see the smoke on the field from the fireworks. We've still got 10 16 left to go. And the Wildcats extend Kentucky 38, Western Kentucky 3. Here to join me for Behind the Blue, tune in to the monthly magazine show that features all of the University of Kentucky's Olympic sports. From swimming to cross country, from volleyball to the rifle team, behind the blue. Check your local listings for the time in your area. Now the Kentucky Wildcats in the process of extending their non-conference winning streak to 13 games. We've still got better than 10 minutes left, but it's 38 to 3 Wildcats. As you see, a guy who's done so much for Western here tonight, Bobby Rainey. Back there around the goal line. Thing is now, Tim Master has got the wind behind him here in this fourth quarter, and he puts it back there in the end zone. Yeah, that's one way to eliminate the talents of Bobby Rainey is just kick it to the back of the end zone. Don't give him an opportunity to bring that thing out. Well, we took a look at the upcoming schedule for the Wildcats as they go to Tuscaloosa next week to take on the Crimson Tide, and then Really what I think Tim is the key part of the schedule the cats will come back here to Commonwealth Stadium for back to back home games against South Carolina and the Arkansas Razorbacks and that, that's really yeah that, what that, it's going to come down to that is that's going to determine what kind of bowl they're going to go to they, they really have to win those two games and it's going to be both of them be hard fought games SEC conference games. Black. He's been under pressure all night and does a great job here to run for better than 10 yards and get a first and 10. Yeah, great job by KJ Black. Been looking for a little room all night long. Hadn't been able to find anything. Finally gets an opportunity to get out into the open and show a little bit of his athletic ability. Matt Lentz made the tackle. Got his first start tonight in place of Ashton Cobb. He now comes off the field. Gain of 12, it's second down, or a bigger pardon, first and 10 now from the 32. Fumble the ball. Pile up for it. I think the Wildcats may have got it. Michael Schwindel was going after it down to the bottom of the pile, and number 21 has come up with it. The junior out of Hawesville, Kentucky. Stepping in at the linebacker spot as Braxton Kelly moved over to middle linebacker, and it's just a mishandled exchange. Yeah, you see KJ Black and Bobby Rainey. That's the little inside draw play, the read play they've been running all night. KJ Black just leaves that thing in there a little too long as Bobby Rainey thinks he's going to hand it to him and tries to pull it out of his hand. All right, the Wildcats go back on offense. Will Fiddler, now the backup quarterback, the sophomore out of Henderson, is coming at quarterback. Fiddler under center. Wearing number one and slinging one here to the freshman Aaron Boyd. So he comes right in, completes a pass. Jahad Morris again there on the coverage. 
Yeah, good good throw there from Will Will Fiedler coming right into the game. This kid was well thought of coming out of high school. Had a lot of a lot of teams recruiting him, some big time teams. Decided to come to Kentucky, and it looks like he's going to be uh, doing a great job for the Wildcats when he gets opportunity. Well, Drew told us earlier about Demario Ford. He is headed now for the Wildcat locker room. Second out and five from the topper 25, Fiddler. Alfonso Smith run out of bounds over at the far sidelines. I think he's short of a first down. L.J. Harbison rode him out over the far, far side of the field. Uh, Alfonso Smith has done a great job tonight. Every time he's touched the ball, he's made something happen. He's caught a couple passes out of the backfield. They were doing a great job of utilizing all his abilities. Well, it's a good opportunity to give Fiddler some work. Yeah, great look, great time for Fiddler to get in and get an opportunity to play against the defense right now and get, uh, hopefully get a few throws in there, you know, get a few checks at the line of scrimmage, just get him some experience. Third down a yard. And Alfonso Smith trying to pick up the first and ten running left, and I believe he did. Morris to get on the tackle for the Hilltoppers. It is a Kentucky first down. Jarvis McBride also in there. Seen some good running by Alfonso Smith here in the second half as the running game has picked up. Yeah, I'm sure Joker Phillips is probably the happiest guy in this stadium right now that this running game is finally clicking a little bit and hopefully they can take this momentum of their running game and take it into Tuscaloosa next weekend when they play Alabama. From the 20 yard line of Western now. And just swinging it out here to the near side of the field to Aaron Boyd. Ryan Beard on the coverage. We just don't know when Randall Cobb might be able to return. He was the Cats backup quarterback until he went down with that high ankle sprain. Three Wildcats out with that injury. Cobb got the worst of it. You know the word out down on the sidelines prior to the game Tim was that Randall Cobb looked pretty good. He did I actually got a chance to talk to Randall down in the uh, down on the field before the game. He was moving around good says it feels good to walk around on. It only hurts him now when he's kind of trying to cut and run around and make a cut off of that ankle. Monsell Allen back of the tailback spot he cracks it down close to the 11 yard line before McBride and John Belcher the nose tackle came in to knock him down. Uh, the good news the good news with Cobb and these guys is they're finally out of the walking boots. That's always a good sign when they get out of the boots and they're able to walk on their own power and put put all their weight down on that ankle. That's a good sign that it's beginning to heal. Get out of the field of Drew. Well Tim you and I were both talking with Randy Sanders before the game. We asked him about Cobb. He, I said can he walk around right now the next step for him is to run and the next step right. after that is to cut it's obviously a big difference those are three distinct stages they are and you do have to go through those stages when you're trying to recover from a high ankle sprain now unfortunately for Randall he had the you know the worst end of that stick all those guys with bad ankles his is a little more severe than the other guys well that was third and a yard Monsell Allen getting the call again and he's got no he doesn't have the first down fourth down it is short Four. They will not measure. It is less than a yard. Might be about a foot. A little hard to tell from our vantage point. Say it's about a foot. And Fiddler pushing his way into the line, trying to pick up the first and ten. And let's see where they mark this one. Penalty marker went down right at the line of scrimmage, dropped to the near side. Five yard penalty against the Cats right tackle now. And Wagers didn't give us a number. I'm not sure who that was. But at any rate, it'll set up a field goal attempt for the Cats. As Ryan Tedlachka, who made good on his very first opportunity this evening from what 45 yards out, this one will be spotted out of the 23-yard line. It'll be a 33-yard attempt, and he's got it. Tedlachka with his second field goal of the night, and the Wildcats extend their lead to 41 to three with about five and a half minutes left on the clock.
And it's time now for our Kentucky Farm Bureau all-around coverage defensive play of the game. Tim, we're going to give it to Corey Peters. Yeah, Corey Peters, I'm sure, making uh, Mark Hill the strength coach at UK proud here as he shows a lot of just brute force of driving through while he's being blocked, pulling the uh, uh, K.J. Black down for a sack. Corey Peters with our Kentucky Farm Bureau all-around coverage defensive play of the game. And Commonwealth Stadium now beginning to empty out as the Wildcats lead it 41 to 3 over Western. And whistles all over the field. As the returner, Darrell Hayden, had his knee down as he took the football in right here. Yeah, uh, Terrell Hayden yeah. not able to keep his knee off the ground. So, you know, in college football, the rules are you're down when your knee's down. So they're going to spot that thing all the way back at the nine yard line. Another switch there. I believe that was J.J. Housley who kicked off for the Cats. Giving Tim Masta a break. I can remember, Tim, that happened one of the first years I was here. Georgia was playing Kentucky and. They threw a pass out to the sidelines and the Georgia receiver had his knee down on the ground caught it picked it up ran down the sidelines and Frank Kersey went wild. <laughs> <laughs> All right on first and ten now for the Hilltoppers who trail in this game 40 run to three the new quarterback and is David Wolke the senior out of Mount Juliet Tennessee the transfer from Notre Dame and he's the fellow who quarterbacked him for the last couple of games. While KJ Black had the separated shoulder. Yeah, David Wilkie's a guy they have a lot of confidence in. As you said, Rob, transfer from Notre Dame, so you know this is a talented football player, a talented kid. So he's getting an opportunity here to come in late in the game and hopefully try to make something happen for the Hilltoppers. Wilkie going to run it right back up the middle. And he's up over the 17 yard line. That was second down and five. Danny Trevathan came in to make the tackle for the Wildcats. Check in down on the field with Drew Diener. Drew? Well, guys, after that last field goal, Kentucky now on the season has outscored the opposition in the fourth quarter. Get this, 51 to 2. They have just poured it on the fourth quarter. I don't know if you got any good theories about it, but it certainly is a good stat to keep going. Well, that's for sure. It's been a good second half offensively for the Cats. And Tyrell Hayden. Out of Lexington Christian Academy should have enough for the first down just across the 20 yard line that was third and short first and ten Tyrell Hayden who in high school ran for 4500 yards and 80 touchdowns at LCA led LCA into the quarters of the state playoffs I believe that was his senior year when they won 11 and 2 but off to a slow start this season and tonight Tim we didn't see a lot of it. Yeah I didn't see a lot of him you know Bobby Rainey was really their workhorse in the backfield and you know was very productive so it's hard for uh, for him to get any carries with Rainey being so successful. He gets another gain of about five yards right here out of the 25 yard line as this clock is running at 345 left to go. Let's listen to Tyrell Hayden as he talked about coming back home to Lexington. Uh, since, uh, last year uh, one of our uh, Goals or things is uh, to make history, and I think this is another great opportunity to make history and really uh, have momentum going to the rest of the season. Well, that it would have been. It hasn't quite worked out for Western here tonight, as they have been behind from the outset, trailed 17 to three at halftime. Hayden takes in the pass, and he's pulled down from behind by Shamari Moore, the senior out of Camden, New Jersey. Under the three minute mark now and. Moore got up a little slowly. And now he appears to be all right as he trots here. Back to the Wildcat defensive alignment. I thought he might have been hurt. Yeah, it looked like it looks like he shook it off pretty good and he's back and uh, back on the field now. Third down now nine yards to go. After a loss of four. Over the middle it's caught. That pass 
taken in by Clark Jeter is also out of Lexington. So we see the two Lexington guys get in here. They have a total of three on the team. Luke McDermott on the tackle for the Wildcats. Clark Jeter is a receiver out of Henry Clay. And of course we've talked about Tyrell Hayden. They also have Rod Johnson who's a running back out of Henry Clay High School. Three players out of Lexington playing back in their hometown here tonight. Fourth down a yard to go from the 30 as the clock now is run all the way down to a minute 40 left. Wolke lost the handle on the ball as I think he was hauled down short of the first down. Danny Trevathan coming in there 41 to make the tackle on him. And they're going to call it what a first down they've moved the sticks. So Western can keep it going here and maintain possession down now with a minute 33 to go. That's good to see some of these Kentucky kids you know Western Kentucky has 42 players on their roster from the state of Kentucky three from Lexington as Rob mentioned so it's good when you're growing up as a kid in Kentucky you dream about playing in Commonwealth Stadium so it's great to see these kids get an opportunity late in this game to go out here and perform in Commonwealth Stadium. The Hilltoppers in their second year of transition into Division 1A what is now called the football bowl subdivision and they've got a tough one next week they got to go to Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech. Yeah that will be a tough game it's always a tough time to play there and you know Kentucky's going on the road to Alabama so it only gets tougher from here for both teams. The Western has gone division one and we certainly wish the best to athletic director Wood Selig and President Gary Ransdell. I can tell you a lot of good things going down in uh, Bowling Green with the expansion and the renovation of uh, Houchins Industries LT Smith Stadium. I was down there on the campus in April and uh, took the tour and saw everything academically athletically from a recreational standpoint. A lot of good things going on at Western Kentucky University. We certainly wish them the best. Absolutely. Certainly wish those guys the best. And it seems for sure that head coach David Elson has this team and this program headed in the right direction. And we do wish them the best of luck in their upcoming endeavor and going into uh, Division 1A. And for the Wildcats, it's on to the SEC. Eight straight SEC games now to conclude the schedule. Yeah here comes the meat of the schedule you know you start playing the Alabama the Tennessee the Florida you know those type play uh, those type teams South Carolina so it's going to be tough for Kentucky but hey they're they're in the SEC that's what they have to deal with on a week to week basis so it's time to strap it on and play some football. Oh, well, Welke got it away to Tyrell Hayden Luke McDermott the red shirt freshman out of Louisville who's in there for the Cats and they're going to let the clock run here and they're going to let it run out it's all over. The Wildcats and the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky in their first meeting ever. Final score Kentucky 41 Western Kentucky 3 and we'll be back to wrap it up after this. Stone Firestone SNS tire Wildcat player of the game. Well with that kickoff return we have decided to give it to Derek Locke. How about Derek Locke. Derek Locke big performance tonight. At this point the game was 10 to 3 and Derek Locke really is a backbreaker right here for Western Kentucky with a 100 yard kickoff return. Bridgestone Firestone and SNS Tire and Auto Service Centers hometown service you've trusted for over 30 years. Derek Locke our Bridgestone Firestone SNS Tire Wildcat player of the game. So stay with us now. Kentucky defeats Western Kentucky here at Commonwealth Stadium. We'll be back in a moment to wrap things up. Here from Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington. Stay with us.